Let's go, huh? Eh? <laughs> Let's go play some Dark of the Souls. It's a Super Mario versus the, the, the demons, I guess. <laughs> all right, all right, hello everyone. Welcome to Dark Souls. Let's make sure that everything is set up on my end. Let's see here. Drop the volume of nothing. There we go. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Last time you closed the game before saving the blah, 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 whatever. Anyway, we're going to start a new game today. Just something, you know, pretty pretty basic and simple. There we go. And welcome to Dark Souls. I'm a me Dog, and I'm a pretty veteran player to this. Let's go ahead and just use my name, I guess. Uh, how about we don't use my name? I'll use something else. How about... Uh, let's just go ahead and use my name. Why not? Why, why not? Why not? I'm feeling lazy. I don't have anything creative in my brain right now. I've been playing for a while, little while Among Us with Little Sue. This is a great stream you should check out. Origami? Okay. Well, okay, well, here's, the, here's the things that kind of matter here. The class you start as. Now, in general, if you want to worry about, like, your level and leveling up, and, of course, you want to start with a Pyromancer. He's usually the best run for most for most builds, not every build, but most of them, the Pyromancer is your best bet. But you see here, we have a bunch of stats right here. Um, and you want you actually want to choose the right one you want to focus on. The three mo the four most blah, blah, blah. the four most important stats is strength, dexterity, intelligence, or faith. You want to choose one of those to focus on for your first playthrough. Anyway, you can you can go for multiple builds if you really want to, but for your first playthrough, I recommend choosing one and going for that one. Now, what does it actually mean? Strength usually means big smashy weapons. It's kind of obvious, right? And dexterity is going to be for your kind of sm smaller finesse weapons. Like if you play Dungeons and Dragons, you probably know what a finesse weapon is. It's like a rapier or a dagger or anything like that, you know? That's what you want dexterity for. Intelligence is for your casting ability. If you want to cast a spell like, you know, magic missile or, well, magic arrow, you know what I mean. <laughs> Intelligence is your go-to. Well, faith allows you to cast other kinds of spells. Hey, welcome in, Ria. How you doing? Yeah, praise the sun indeed. <laughs> I just kind of doing a walkthrough kind of playthrough. I mean, I, I'm pretty used to this kind of game, so it's not that difficult for me. But I figured that for new players, I can help them out a little bit. Anyway, I was talking about faith, right? Faith is mostly about healing, though it does have its own offensive builds. It's more about, like, recovery and kind of buff kind of effects. There's actually a third type of magic called pyromancy. However, that does not tie to any of your stats, at least not in this game anyway. Uh, your vitality up there, that is how much health you have, while attunement is how many spells you can attach to yourself. Now, for my playthrough, I'm not going to be using very much attunement. I only need like one or two spells, maybe. Maybe three or four, not not much. Endurance is how much stamina and how much you can carry. It's very important to, get, to carry more stuff and how much stamina you have, though it kind of caps out, I believe, at like 25 points. So you can go up to 25, but after that point, you'll just be increasing your carrying capacity, not your stamina. Uh, resist resistance here, I did not mention, because it's a trap stat. Do not look at that stat at all when uh, you're making a character. Do not in increase that one. It's, it's actually a completely a trap stat. It helps you resist, like, poison and whatnot, but it comes in handy never, so don't worry about that one. In fact, completely ignore it. It's not there. Now, you may notice that each of these characters start with a different level, and with Pyromancer being the lowest. The, the higher level you are, the, the more points it takes to level up. Which, you know, makes sense, right? Though... Pyromancer is typically the best choice you have when it comes to certain builds, like strength. Okay, you finally released your game, and my band did a live gig on the days before, and you're doing pretty good well. Oh, congratulations. Oh, wait. That's right, you, you released the game? Oh, shoot. I need I need to schedule that in somewhere. Well, uh, I think I have it on my wish list, don't I? I need to schedule that in for, for soon. Oh, uh, where is it? Today? Dar I already did this. That's it's just stream Ria's game. Stream Ria's game. I'll definitely do that, if I can. Bam! Add that to the list. But yeah, how, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Just had a little bit of a uh, Among Us game with Rudel Sue, who's a great streamer. And I really enjoy <laughs> hanging out with her. Though, yeah, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Hey, Crafty Tanuki, how are you doing? We're playing Dark Souls today. I'm just kind of doing a kind of walkthrough, explaining how they play the game and, you know, whatnot. Make sure that people know, like, if you want to figure out how to play the game, they can watch my stream, or this, at least the thought of the stream, to figure out how to do it. I, myself, am going to be going as a cleric, because I like faith builds. They're not the best, usually, but I, I just kind of like the versatility of being able to heal and attack at the same stat, as well as other little little bonuses you can get. Now, your gift here is actually kind of important as well. 
Now, th this here is a full heal, but it's actually not as important as you, as you might think it is because you have a steady supply of healing from the Estes Flask. So the best choices here typically is going to be the Black Fire Bomb, which is a lot of damage, or the Master Key. In general, you want the Master Key, though. The, the Black Fire Bomb is best if you're going to... Ever seen Fate Stay Night? I have... I have read a few chapters, but I've never actually seen it, no. Oh, is it good? I hope it is. The, the Black Fire Bomb, anyway. It does a ton of damage to certain monsters. Well, it does a ton, ton, ton of damage, actually, especially in the early game. So if you want to kill the, the early game boss right, right on your first encounter, you want to use the Black Fire Bombs here to get your hands on his weapon, which is a strength weapon, so it's only useful if you're already in strength. Well, you can, of course, use it to get past the bosses in the early game. You typically don't need to have that kind of thing when, you know, you're playing it. It's a consumable while the Master Key will actually open up a bunch of areas for you in the future. So you can actually access stuff a little bit earlier. You can go different routes. It's very useful, but you don't need to have it, of course. Uh, Twin Humanity is, is, is a full heal. And it gives you two points of humanity, which you can spend on upgrading a bonfire, which is pretty nice. Or... Well, so that you can gift it to a covenant in order to increase your rank with them. Not all covenants take these, but some of them do. Binoculars are basically useless, and you can find them in the game, but they just see farther away. Woohoo! Pendant is absolutely no, no effect, but you know, you can take it if you want. Made saber from PvP, invisible great sword surprises a bunch of people. Oh, that sounds pretty heckin' great. <laughs> oh yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty used to this game. Oh, hello Plasma, welcome in. The tiny, tiny beings ring will increase your health by about. 5 to 8 percent, something weird like that. Not a whole lot, honestly. And the Old Witch's Ring. I believe this allows you to talk to a certain NPC. However, it's not the most useful if you're not going for that Covenant. I believe it, the Covenant is the Chaos Covenant, which gives you some Pyromancy, which is kind of cool. And also, also helps the shortcut if you have the humanity for it. However, we're not going to be able to go for that one ourselves. And you don't really need to be able, able to understand what she's saying to actually enter the Covenant in the first place. It just gives you extra dialogue. If you have it equipped anyway. So we're going to take the Master Key. Physique does not actually matter. We're just going to kind of go, like, you know, randomly, I guess. Yeah, Dark Souls, all you doing, huh? Let's have a big head. I'll, I'll just go for big head. Face. The face does not matter. You can look at it however you want. There we go. I guess we'll just go with that one. Uh, and then you can choose hairstyle, too. How about, we, how about we go with the old Vegeta here? There we go. Good enough. Vegeta has black hair. Yeah, good enough. There, yeah, it's Dark Souls. So yeah, we're, we're clerics, so we actually start with certain equipment. See the stuff we're wearing right now? We start off with this, though we don't get the weapon right off the bat. There we go. Your weapons and, and uh, casting abilities will not actually be handed to you until a little bit later. The age of ancients. The world was... But yeah, your most important stats are dexterity, strength, intelligence, or faith. You can choose one, though sometimes it's, it's good to have a decent amount in some of them. Like dexterity can be kind of important to wield certain weapons. Same with strength. Though, you know, you don't need to really invest too heavily in each one. Hopefully, anyway. But then there was fire. Ah, here's the lore of the game. And with fire came disparity. Yes. And some had light while everyone else was dark. And cold. Life. And death. And of course, light. There we go. Fire. 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 So, oh, so you, you're a big fan of, uh... <laughs> so let's see, some of you guys already know how to play this game. But yeah, this is just kind of a tutorial kind of game. We're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through making a new character. I won't tell you how to do it, in terms of like, I'm not gonna give you a certain build. I'm just gonna tell you like what you can do, and kind of boss strategies here. Nito, the first of the day. Yeah, yeah, look at him. It looks so cool. The witch of Isolith and her daughters of Chaos. Who you'll sadly never meet. You'll meet like two or three of the daughters of Chaos, but never the Isolith queen herself. And his faithful knights. <laughs> this guy was in uh, Resident Evil 8. And the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. Yeah, the pygmy is actually only in Dark Souls 3, I believe. So, sadly, you don't get to beat them. In fact, I don't even think you can actually encounter them at all. They challenge the dragons. Yeah, look at that double jaw there. Grinning 
Once mighty gods peeled apart western skills. Sweet great fire stories. Nito unleashed a miasma of death. Was there you can see her inside the Oh she can you see her inside the bed of chaos? I didn't actually remember seeing that. Also just see a big old like well tree. Huh. It's not actually true. There's still like two or three dragons hanging out. But, you know, most of them are dead. I, I probably will show it to you once we get to that point in the game, but it'll probably be next stream if if we get that far. Began the age of fire. Ah, the age of fire. But soon the flames will fade and only dark will remain. So basically, the plot of this game is that all the heroes from the previous generation are like, Oh man, I like the Age of Fire, because we know we're the heroes of the Age of Fire. We want to keep it around. So they're trying to keep the fire going, though I'm not really certain what this metaphysical fire actually is, and will sacrifice many lives to do it. And our job is either to choose between the Age of Dark or the Age of Fire. The living are seen. Carriers of the accursed Oh, I thought that was just like a giant bug. I thought it was a little beetle thing. Okay. I guess it was a... Was, was it really? Huh. Alright, alright. Unfortunately for us, though, we started off in the middle of prison with no, no items, really. I mean, we got pants, I guess, but nothing too great. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. Basically, the dark sign means that you're going to be either you're marked to be sacrificed to the fire, which sucks. It's going to be madness. Hey, tubes! How are you doing? Yeah, it's Dark Souls. I'm doing a kind of playthrough that help people learn how to play the game. So if you want to learn how to play Dark Souls or already know how to play, I guess you can keep watching anyway. Welcome in. Welcome in. To await the end of the world. Hey, Arknight, so I'll come in. You're in lurk mode, but eating will be here. Hey, don't worry about it. Arknight, yeah, we got this. We got this. I'm just kind of, I'm not really that uh, intimidated by this game, honestly. Is your fate. Right. Right. Hey, Pac-Man, welcome in. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Yeah, we're Vegeta here. Stuck in the the cell, but luckily our friend up here throws a body for us, which apparently has the key to the door. Otherwise, we'd be kind of stuck here forever, and you know that wouldn't be that fun of a game, would it? Oh yeah, thank you for contributing to the challenge. We're actually pretty getting pretty close already. In fact, I'm kind of surprised at how fast that was. Holy crap! We still have 25 days left on the challenge, and you guys are all already halfway through. Okay, well here we go. Get get a free key. All right, and now we're free. You start the game with this item here, however, it is a broken sword hilt and it is useless to us, so we're going to actually unequip it. Gone. In fact, these pants are not that great. We're gonna, probably going to replace them later on, but for now, we're just going to, you know, leave them. There we go. If you move around with the control stick and hit circle to roll. Rolling is very important to dodge enemy attacks. The the thing about the reason why I unequip the sword, though, is because it's actually slower. It takes more energy than our fist does, so no reason they only have it equipped. It does about the same amount of damage, too, so there's no real reason to, to hold it, you know? So I got out of here. And here we go! Our first bonfire! We can light it, pressing X, and we can sit at to just kind of like reset the enemies in the area and heal up ourselves. Get back all of our spells, like we have the heal spell right now. We walk through this door. And... What happens? Oh no, a big demon shows up. We can try and fight it, but we do like two damage, you know? So it's not the most effective either. You can slowly kill him, but if you start with the black fire bombs here, you can actually toss him at this guy, hit him about three times and he'll die. It's pretty great. Eh. Eh. Now, whenever a monster attacks, it's generally a better idea to roll into their attack by hitting circle. That way, they'll basically clip straight through you and miss. And because, well, also the way it means you're going to be in the attack radius a little bit less time than um, 
<laughs> you'll, unless you'll, you want to be in their attack range as little time as possible. So by rolling into their attack, it's only when you intersect with their attack do you get hit, or do you be able to get hit. And if you're rolling, of course, you're safe. Oh no! Ow! Oh! But obviously, if you're doing two damage here, what are you supposed to do, huh? Well, you're supposed to leap through this door over here. Ow! Jerk! Music ends, the door closes, and he stops fighting you. Oh well. <laughs> Too bad for him, huh? Here's another bonfire, you can just use it to rest up. There we go! <laughs> yeah. Here's our first actual enemy, this uh, jerk with the, with the arrow. Ow. Nah, I could have sworn. I just got a shield. I could equip the shield if I wanted to, but it's not really worth it. Ignoring it, that. There I go. Yeah, it doesn't hurt that much. Here's our first weapon, though, the mace. Now, the mace is actually pretty bad. It's really, really slow. But it's better than nothing, right? So, whatever. All right, all right. So, when an enemy attacks you, they'll be facing a certain direction, right? So if you get behind him, you can get a free backstab. Bam! He's dead. Backstabs do an absolute ton of damage, especially if you're using a, a dagger and have high dexterity and that kind of thing. So typically you want to backstab if you can. Not every single enemy can be backstabbed, but a good number of them can. Any humanoid enemy can be. So we're going to walk over here. We're going to open this door. There we are. And now I can go back in there if you want to. Or uh, rest at the bonfire. However, I'm not really that hurt, so I'm not going to bother. Let's go over here and head up the stairs. And oh no! A boulder! Ah! So this boulder actually opens up the wall over here, and we can go talk to the friend we met earlier. Hey! You. You're no hollow, hmm? Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon then lose my sanity. You and I, we're both undead. <laughs> yeah. Hear me out, will you? Sure, buddy. I have failed in my mission, but perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family, Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. And there we go. We got Estus flask, which is nice. Uh, here's, here's the key to get to the top floor. Farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. Yeah, it's, it's sunny deep, basically. And thank you. It heals for a decent amount. Ta-da! As soon as we leave, you'll die, and you'll take it. You'll get a hundred of his souls or whatever. All right, about now. Well, yeah, you see, it does 57 damage normally, but backstab does almost 200, so it's a much better chance to go for a backstab. However, if you're holding it in one hand, or you can hit triangle or the top button on your controller to go for two-handedness, and two-handedness is actually a very good way to deal extra damage because it actually improves it. Improves your physical attack stat, so your strength modifier anyway, by 1.5, I think it is. See, yeah, look, 101 damage instead of 45. Pretty good. There we go. However, we also got our Canvas Talisman, which also casts spells in the Faith category. You need Stabs to cast ma Magic Spells and f Talismans to cast Faith Spells. This guy's got a shield. He can try and charge us and block his, at his attacks. Same thing as before. Just walk behind him, and you should be able to just back and stab him. Or you can just wail on him, I guess. That'll help, too. Just think of like, having, like, this hand, like this mace here will actually block... Break shields fairly easily if they try and block it, so just keep hammering on them. They're big, strong club weapons. And here, when you drop down on this cliff, you can actually attack. You get a drop stab and do an absolute ton of damage. Look at that. Boom. I tell you all this stuff in, in the uh, notes of the game, but you don't actually have to read those if you don't want to. And I won't. I'll just tell it for you anyway. There we go. What's kind of neat about this game, honestly, though, is if you just walk in the right ways, you can actually avoid basically any attack. See? No problem there. Ah, there we go. And we got 2,000 extra attack points. Nice. I've been super tired because of the human parasite inside, but we're managing... Okay, oh. 
Okay, he'll take it. Take it easy, okay? <laughs> take some rest if you have to. So we're kind of here on a cliff, and there's no other way to go. So what's what do we do? Well, we just kind of walk towards the cliff, I guess, and just take a look out. Oh, I sure hope nothing bad happens to me while I'm here. In the ancient legends, it is stated that one day an undead shall be Oh no, a bird! <laughs> Oh, uh, I just have to do it shortly, so I'm stuck awake. Okay, I'll take it easy, okay? Thank you for popping in today. Hey, I'll come in, I'll come in. Yeah, we get grabbed by a giant bird. Um, not certain why that is, but I guess here we go. Free crow taxi. Take it easy, okay? If you can. No way. <laughs> Build this path. Okay, okay. All right, then. So, now we're in the main world proper. So, first thing we want to do is just sit down. I mean, you know, boom. Level up and invest our stats. What we're going to do is, is invest about... Two points, I believe it is, in dexterity, and the rest into faith. There we go. Boom. You never travel by 20 foot crow? No, no. I mean, like, I mean, it, it seems a little bit too fancy for my taste, you know what I mean? So there's multiple ways you can go here, and the way you want to go is actually over here, this way. Up this little cliff, and to find a bunch of, like, weak hollows. However, if you want, if you want to challenge yourself, you can go this way as well, through this little a chapel and fight some skeletons but we're not going to do that right now because we start with the master key we can actually open up some other ways as well we can talk to this guy but all he talks about is like oh man this game is too hard he can't play it oh man i suck you know we're just going to ignore him there we go and go down the staircase here yeah, this staircase is right here but it's a little bit faster to jump off that cliff there now if you're a faith build over here is actually an item that's very useful for you and if you're just, in general, another item here is also very good. So, starting off with the Master Key is also a great way to get your hands on some decent items early on. Now, you don't have to do this course, and you don't have to Faith Build, because, you know, Strength, strength, Dexterity, and Intelligence actually are a little bit easier. Though, Faith starts off a little earlier, with a little early boost, if you know what to do. So, we're going to go this way. Now, if you want to come down here and talk to this guy, you can actually upgrade your Magic Items here. Your Magic Weapons, anyway. He does Magic only, so it's Intelligence. But we're a faith caster, so we don't care. We're not going to be raising our intelligence anytime soon. We're going to remain dumb and pretty all our lives. Well, as pretty as we can be, right? <laughs> Here we go. See, the master key lets you open this door. What does he grab this? So just, you know, a little bit of souls. Nothing too, nothing too fancy here. And walk over here. Now, if you walk down this tunnel, you can encounter a much later area where you will go into a giant poison swamp. It's called Blight Town. It's not very fun because of how much it lags your computer or whatever game you're playing it on. Or it's not that bad. What's out of hell? A temperate boots. Arms like a navy and a face like dried fruit. That's right. What we want to do is actually go over here. If you hold circle down, you can run. Uh, if you press circle while running, you can jump. It's not a very effective jump, but you know, it works. So this guy is kind of ominous, don't you think? So what we're going to do is we're going to very slowly walk over here and grab this. There we go. We're fine. See, we're fine. Then I'm going to very slowly walk over here and grab that. We got the sword. The sword is actually really, really good. It's about a holy sword, which is basically a plus five sword, then slot into holy. Very, very nice for a faith caster. And if you can equip it, you know, it's decent for the early game. And they got the shield, and now we run. Nope, oh, sorry, buddy. That's all right, roll into the attacks, and you'll probably dodge. But if, you get, if it does hit you, you die. Oh, no. Oh, we only dropped about 163 souls, so I'm not that worried about, you know, missing out on that. Oh, well. And because we used the other bonfire, and we died just now, we'll actually respawn right here, at this bonfire. Now, one extra bonus feature of having this holy sword means that you can actually go over this way, to where the graveyard is, and, well, fight the skeletons here. 
Now, I'm not telling you you should do this, but if you want to do this, this is the best way to do it. Yeah, I got slapped. Oh no, ouch. Oh. Now, there's actually a small benefit to using a holy weapon. And that's because undead like this are kind of hecked when they get hit by it. And instead of respawning, they'll actually die if you heal them, heal them with it. There we go. Now, you can actually lock on by pressing in the control stick on the right side. However, I almost never do this. There we go. There we go. See, I can lock onto them and, and if I want to, but honestly, I prefer to keep the camera control on, on my own end. This way. Ow. Jerk. There we go. We got them both. Because when you're moving around and locked on, your movement style will completely change to where you'll circle around the opponent, kind of like doing this little like little tap dance move while walking around. It's, it's kind of distracting to me, and I don't really like it at all. However, mastering your control of the camera can actually be a very big benefit as well, or you're not relying on lock-on here. So like, you see how I'm kind of walking around? I'll always face towards him, and my movement's very weird. If I let go, I actually move a little bit more smoothly, and it's you know easier to do stuff. Ow, jerks. Now, you see that bar there? That's bleed. I prefer if you wouldn't hit me again. If, if I get high enough bleed, I will take damage from it. There I go. Healing. No, I gotta take another bleed hit. There I go. There we go. I take blood. will actually take a lot of damage. Will it be a death counter? Not, not really. If you guys want to keep track of me, you can. But again, I, I'm just doing this for, I'm just doing this for um, demonstration purposes. You saw how tough these guys were. They took three to four hits with a holy sword, which you know is kind of a lot. But again, I didn't really have a lot of souls. I should be able to pretty easily grab them anyway. Oh, that's two. Yep, it's two. Ah, let's go back and grab them for a quick... Quickly to get my souls back. It's not a whole lot. But yeah, you can see how this area is very difficult comparatively. Oh, maybe... Well, you see how difficult this area is first, you know. Even with the white preparations. Ow. Jerk. I'll heal though, thank you. There we go. But you see, when they're standing up and fully, like, through with the animations, they'll actually stagger every time you hit them with a power attack with a holy sword. So it makes it very easy to kill them if you want to. However, you see, we only got 300 souls, which is not really that much compared to what we had earlier. In fact, this item we picked up earlier, the large nameless soldier soul, will actually give us 1,000. So, you know, it's not really worth it going over here if you don't want to. However, there are some things you can only get over there, but for the time being, it's actually very difficult for, especially for a new player. There we go. Let's go ahead and put some more sport points into faith. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and just slap on a little more endurance. Having some more stamina would be nice. And a quick load, too. Yep. Now, if we head this way, which is the way we're supposed to be going... Hey, Wilson, how you doing? Welcome, welcome to Dark Souls. Look at that. One hit, one kill. Easy. <laughs> now, if you start with a basic weapon, you'll more likely do about 40 to 7 or so damage. But this thing will basically kill them in one hit. However, it's it's only for faith build. So if you if you want to have a uh, easy start of the game, go for a faith build. Yeah, see, see how easy that was? Death. Death, you know. Now, even the one-handed basic attack will do 83 damage. It's it's so easy. Yeah, if you start off as the bandit, though, has a high strength. You should be able to do something similar. However, the bandit axe is significantly slower than the sword is. So, you know. This is the best weapon you can get in the early game for the first, like, chapter or so. Like on console? Yes, I am playing on PS4. There I go. See? PS4. Oh. Now, there's some secrets over here you can actually do to make things a little bit weird. Oh, well, actually, there's some weird things you can do about this game, but I'm not going to show them off right now because I already did the kind of cheaty thing where I got the sword. Oh. There I go. This two-handed swing, by the way, is very nice. Look at the size of this arc. It goes from one side to the other. 
Meaning anything in your way, directly in front of you, will get hit. No thanks. There we go. And... Uh, bam! When you see one of these gates, you press X to walk through it. However, if somebody's stopping you in the butt, you can't do it. So you have to watch out for that. Right here... Is a dragon. Hello, dragon. Ow. You see, this event is actually kind of important. There's actually another way around through a very difficult area to avoid this event entirely. Meaning later on, when you get to a certain area where the dragon normally is, he actually won't be there. Because you have to trigger this event here for him to appear in the other place. It's kind of weird. Alright. So again, you see these guys will block out very often. By hitting uh, the attack button and forward at the same time, ow, you should be able to kick. Like, like so. They'll break their shield and, or their guard and allow you to hit them. So if you want to be more effective about it, you don't actually have to kick at all. Kicking can be kind of difficult to uh, avoid doing, but if you're new to the game, just take your time and, you know, wait, wait for your attacks if they can. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, ah. Oh, oh. Stab. There we go. Now, I personally prefer to have a long sword. So if you don't start with one, you should go to this guy and I believe buy one right here. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Okay. I trade for. You do several emails by, by pressing certain buttons, and I ac accidentally did that apparently. So, oh well. <laughs> Let's see. He also sells the orange guy in soap zone, which he also direct messages to other players. Nice. Has the residence key we can use to open certain doors, which is cool. And he has the repair box. I don't remember having that. Okay. Oh yeah, he has a short sword here, rapier, hand axe, a club, reinforced club, a spear, short sword. Oh, he does not actually have a long sword. Okay. The short sword is not ne nearly as good as the long sword is because you want more reach with the long sword. However, the dagger is kind of okay. You can just use that if you want. But if you kill him, he actually has a unique weapon to all to himself. However, most of his stuff is just kind of bad, so we're not going to worry about it. He'll drop a, a katana, which is actually fairly good. But we're not going to kill him because I don't have any need for a dex weapon. Dex katanas and other kind of like finesse weapons like that are very much dex based. This clown likes to snipe me. So we're just going to kill him. Now, this site right here is going to be very welcoming to new players. This is the bonfire. Actually, to any player, really. Seeing it allows you to, well, recover your health, level up, and all kinds of stuff like that. However, it does have the caveat that other players, that, that enemies will come all the way back. So you got to watch out for that. This guy is dead. This guy, oh. If you want it, you can actually just kick them until they fall off a cliff. Like so. Bye-bye. If you walk across here, the guys up there will try to throw bombs at you, which is not good. But if you just walk across slowly, don't stop, you'll be fine. Ow. Darn. Oh, what the? Hey! Jerk, get out of here. Again, because we're a cleric, we can actually cast a healing spell. Again, in the early game, this is a very, very nice setup. Where you can cast healing spells and use your flasks to get a lot of health back. The spells will come back every time you rest at a bonfire. There's a certain limit to the amount you can carry. Uh, in later games, they'll actually add in ways to recover the, this en this MP, but in this game, I don't believe there is a way. At least not now, anyway. Hello, there he is. Other side. I don't know why I feel so bad with these skeleton NPCs making a joke of it. They made a joke of it, yeah. <laughs> I should. They're, they're jerks. And I'll come over here. Ow, he jumped a little bit early. There we go. The last one will throw a bomb at you, but just walk around him. There we go. If you climb up this ladder over here, we can actually come up to where the enemies were before and kill them so they don't stop so they stop throwing bombs at you. Jerks. Ah yes. He's behind a pillar, so he'll just hit the pillar instead of hitting you. Very it's very funny. Now if you head up down if you head down this way, the enemy on top of this tower will shoot you in the back while you're fighting those guys. So we're not gonna do that. I'm just gonna walk up here and just kinda oh, Hey. Slap him. There we go. We're gonna walk forward. We're gonna say hello. We're gonna slash. There we go. And slash. Take his stuff. We're gonna say, hey, hey, what you gonna do, buddy? What you gonna do? See, he'll block your attack if you let if you try to attack him whenever you want. But if you wait for him to attack, you can actually walk up behind him and slap him in the butt. Now I'm gonna try something a little bit nah silly hold on a minute. And if you walk up here, this bear, bear will come down, and then you can turn around and walk away. It's the best way to avoid that attack. 
Now, if you see them running at you and they're kind of like pulling their shield to the side to attack with their sword, that's the best time to hit them. So try and hit them while doing that. Now, if you have your if you have a shield or a weapon unequipped, you can hit L2 to do a parry. If they try and hit you with a parry, you can you can most of the time block it. However, it's all it's limited to people with weapons, so if they don't have a weapon, they won't be able to hit them. Like so. There we go. And after you parry them, you get a free repost attack. So by combining these together, you can get a free backstab and a free parry over and over again. If you want to, you can actually backstab them over and over again. However, it's not the most effective technique, you know. Whoop. There we go. Now, parry is really good for opening up certain enemies like this one. And giving you an opportunity to heal as well. There we go. Of course, getting the timing down for a parry takes a long time, so try and practice that if you can. That enemy is considered pretty difficult, so <laughs> I'm glad I got him on the first try. It doesn't usually work out that way. All right, all right. So we already fought the first boss. You know, the best technique for that boss is just to kind of, you know, slap him in the head, try and do the drop stab, and then keep poking at him. However, this boss over here actually takes a little bit more technique. Our view. Right now, we're actually going to get this guy to get a free bonus item. Uh, Twinkly Tiny Knights and Tiny Knight Chunks. Nice. The Chunks Shards or uh, Large Shards are upgrades to your stuff, to your weapon. However, this weapon here is special and that cannot be upgraded that, that way. It requires Twinkly Tide Knight, which is the one we got from these guys. Our regular weapons can be upgraded with the, the regular Tide Knight Chunks and whatnot. And those are upgrade materials. You want to hold on to them until you can find a, a smith to use them. There we go. Now, if you head up forward, you'll actually encounter a giant demon. But if we turn around, there's actually a, actually an arrow, a ladder right here. This goes up here, and there's, there's jerks that'll shoot you while you're in the middle of the bridge. Real pains in the butt, I tell you. And I got this one and two. Hmm, no, no drops, huh? Not our day today. <laughs> So I'm just going to walk forward, wait for him to spawn. There he is, the big demon guy, and run away. So general tips here is to try and get this off right here. The first two bosses are typically pretty easy. You can just kind of like do this drop stab on them and take a huge chunk of their health out. Oh, there he is down there, see? Drop stab, boom, half his health is gone. Now your open poly is not this powerful, this early in the game anyway, so don't try and rely on that. However, if you want to, you can actually lure him away into it again. However, that's not the best idea. It's not really the best idea by yourself. If you have another player, though, you can do it. He's got a very, very long wind-up in his sack, so if you see him, like, winding up like that, just walk away. Most of the time, he'll be able to dodge it, but not always. Oh, I did not want to heal there. Okay, hello. Now, but you see, he's able to turn on a dime, too, if you're not careful. He's actually attacking a little bit slower than I remember him doing it. There we go. If you tap square, if you tap the drink button while drinking, you'll actually be able to drink twice. Yeah, let's just kill it. Ow. There we go. Typically, you want to roll into his attacks. However, this first boss here is a little bit difficult because his act attacks are actually very slow. They take longer than you think they would, so try and wait for the last second to dodge if you can. It's not always the easiest thing, but you know. Speaking about dodging, by the way, um, you may notice that I'm kind of doing this, this rather like fast roll here, right? But if I equip something else, let's see here, Hollow Warrior Helm, uh, the Dragon Crest, sh uh, Hollow Night Shield, no, this Black Night Shield, I got a Black Night Shield, sweet. There we go, and why not we just add another one. There. You see, now our, now our dodging is much, much slower. How much equipment you're carrying around actually does matter in terms of how fast your ability to dodge is. So, and your movement speed is also slightly slower too, which is bad. So I actually want to drop all that stuff. It may carry the Dragon quest Crest Shield. The Crest Shield is actually very useful later on in the game, but for now, it's not the most that useful. You know, we don't really want it. We want to be able to move fast. We can. Yeah. There we go. Ooh, and here's the Bridge of Infamy. But first, you actually want to look over here to talk to everyone's favorite NPC. There he is! Hello! Ah, hello. You don't look hollow. Far from it. I am Soler of Astora, 
an adherent of the Lord of Sunlight. Now that I am undead, I have come to this great land, the birthplace of Lord Gwyn, to seek my very own son. Do you find that strange? Well, you should. No need to hide your reaction. I get that look all the time. <laughs> and there you can talk to him again. Ah, uh, there you go. Aha. So I didn't scare you. I have a proposition, if you have a moment. Sure. The way I see it, our fates appear to be intertwined. In a land brimming with hollows, could that really be mere chance? So what do you say? Why not help one another on this lonely journey? Sure. Well then, take this. Then they see the white sand soapstone. Well, this does allows you to be summoned to other, help other people out. Also, if you're a human, which you have to spend at a uh, humanity point at the bonfire to become human, you can actually summon other other players to uh, engage in cooperative play gameplay, which is fun. I used to do this quite often, honestly, let me tell you. I spent hours, honestly, doing that. Because <laughs> it, it always feels good to help new players get past the area. Now, we get to this bridge, what we want to do is immediately run, because things are going to get really bad really fast. That's right. Dragon is here to breathe fire on us. Ouch. Whew. So what? Yeah, taking cover in that little staircase is the best way you can do. And we go down here, kick this ladder, and guess what? The bonfire is right here. Ow. However, we're not quite done yet. What we want to do is actually head back to that merchant guy and buy a bow. Now, for me, I don't really need this, this weapon, but for people that are starting the game, it's actually the, one of the best weapons that you can possibly get. It's very nice. Eh, come on, come on. There we go. He stops turning once he attacks, so you can get a free backstab on him that way. Or you can just, you know, uh, whoops, equip him. Kick him, kick, there we go, like that. And give him the old stab. Ah. So while we're here, let's go ahead and talk to this guy. And buy... Well, we could buy the key. I don't really need that, though. As well, if you want to become a, a caster, this key will help you unlock a NPC who will train you in magic. However, if you're not going to be an intelligence-based ca caster, you don't need to worry about that. Oh, uh, did I not say hello to Plasma? I hope I did. Anyway, we're going to buy a short bow. Yay! And then we're going to buy about three wooden arrows. An absolute ton of wooden arrows. Why not? There I go. Thank you, kind. <laughs> Now I have a near infinite amount of little, little tiny arrows that don't do a whole lot of damage. However, you know, shooting people with these arrows will help draw them to us in case you want to, like, you know, separate enemies from other ones. Or very slowly kill them if they don't be too far away. Uh, let's see here. I'll get some more endurance. I'll be able to carry more stuff, honestly. Boom. I'm not really that worried about having the faith requirements just yet to do stuff. The spells also have a equipment level, uh, requirements. You need to have a certain level of faith or intelligence, depending on the spell, to equip it. That's not true of um, pyromancies, but but intelligence spells need intelligence and faith spells needed faith. It kind of makes sense, right? There's a clown like right here is going to try to attack us. Hello. So we're just going to stab him in the butt. Boom. Nice. There's another one of these guys right here. We're going to kick him and stab him. There we go. Now, you see that tail over there? Let's see here. That is a, a weak point. Oh, I don't have the stats to use this with. Oh, I don't have the stats to use this. Okay. Well, nuts. And, oh, I have to actually equip arrows too. Duh. <laughs> it only works with arrows. Uh, what's up? What's up? Come on. Aim and... Oh, shoot. There I go. Oh, I missed. There I go. Hello. <laughs> Darn it. So this is kind of for demonstration purposes. I don't have the dexterity to actually wield this weapon anyway, or the the bow. 
But if you shoot him in the tail enough times, he'll actually drop a weapon. A very good weapon for this early in the, in the game, you know? However, we have the Sword of Astora, so we don't need to worry that much about it. Oh yeah, just, just do that over and over again, and, you know... You should be able to get a, a nice... Nice sword. But I don't have dexterity for it, so whoops. <laughs> now, normally, you, you go this way in order to... Fight all, the, fight all these, you know, rats and whatnot, and try to make your way across to the... There we go. They carry across the bridge, because the dragon is kind of blocking the bridge, and you can't get past him. It sucks. Come up here. There we go. And there's actually a gate, like, right here, which is closed. You see, that bonfire is actually the other side of the dragon bridge. So you force can't cross just yet. You can actually do it if you're careful, but for beginning players, I would highly recommend not trying to. Oh, he did die. Okay. Now, this over here is a rather unique enemy who's very dangerous. So what we want to do is try and avoid him by going over here. To the stairs. Hey, it's Lewis. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome in. Oh, I thought you were going to be live for a while. How are you doing? Come on. Huh? Ooh. You see, whenever you're in the middle of a backstab animation, you actually cannot be hurt. Which is great. Oof. Uh, go ahead and heal a little bit. There I go. Thank you. Oh, he dodged it. Nice dodge. There I go. Ow. The spear guys will drop their attack after they attack you. Or the, the sword guys will drop their attack before they attack you. It's kind of like a, a intake. Go follow these dudes. Yes, definitely follow them. Just watching it to see what games... <laughs> for that, okay. <laughs> well, welcome in. Thank you so much. Now, we just got an item just now, right? Let's see here. Actually, didn't add it here. Automat there we go. It's called the Alluring Skull. If you throw a... Oh, hello. And normally on your item bar, down here, you want to have the health item, of course, the heal. However, the Alluring Skull is another item you can use in the item bar. Pressing square, while well, it has is equipped on your little D-pad thing here. You can actually do this. Eh. Yeah. It's called Alluring because enemies will be attracted to it. Very nice. And that fire there is very, uh, well, dangerous to say, so, so for our pig friend. Oof, look at that. Nasty. <laughs> Has the, I don't have the bot. Oh! Oh, I, I thought so. Yeah, I was kind of busy with all kinds of things today. Oh. Ah, so, darn. Sometimes the pig will drop a very heavy and just kind of okay helmet, but we're kind of sad I didn't get one. Oh, well. Whoa, it's a, oh, thank you for the follow. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> Whoa, that's right. It's tubes and wove. That's right. <laughs> okay, do I want to do this? Do I want to risk this? Nah, you know what? Let's not worry about this just yet. Oof. Rawr. So that's how you do this the normal way. You know, you get over here, you walk, you walk through there, kill the pig, and, you know, try not to die. So I equip that while I'm not using it. Kind of rebrand. Wolf. <laughs> Wolf, wolf, wolf. Okay, <laughs> sounds like fun. There we go. Go ahead. Ow. Whoa, hey, Lewis, look at the raid. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, so <laughs> I thought you were just talking about like <laughs> popping in a chat. Well, welcome in, welcome in. Oh, jeez. You know what? I need, I need to do better about shouting at people. I, I've been kind of lazy with this. So please check out. It's Lewis. Uh, let's see here. What? You got it. It's Lewis ninety three. There we go. I always forget the numbers at the end. And I got bot is alive. I got I got it. I put the bot on. And of course you want to shout out my friends uh Tubes and Wolf. They're great streamers as well. There we go, boom. Yeah, follow, follow all of them. Welcome on United. Thank you so much for the raid. Hey, welcome in, welcome in. This is just kind of my tutorial for Dark Souls, honestly. So I, I just showed you how to do that do the normal way. You just kinda of take your time. Don't move too quickly, just kinda of fight one rat at a time, because they're actually kinda of dangerous. And make it way across the bridge there. Make sure you remember how to kick. That's important. Here we're going to show you how to get across this way. Oof. Nasty. If you stand right here in this corner, he can't burn you. Great. Ah! Enjoy. Thank you so much. Hey, don't worry about it. Yeah. Oof. 
Dangerous, dangerous. So what you want to do is wait for him to land. You'll make a, you'll roar and then try and land in order to get to get you because he can't get you here. You're just kind of pissing him off. In fact, if I still have the bow equipped, I should be able to shoot him. Uh, there I go. Come on. Oh, he didn't even react. Okay. Come on, buddy. Oh, oh he's running. Okay, he's, he's running. I didn't want to do that. No. <laughs> I'm stuck. Okay, can't see. You can't see. Ah, that sucks. Don't go out. You'll spam fire. Yeah, that sucked. Okay, I, I was stuck in zoom in mode. Whoops. Ah, that sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a jerk. What a jerk. Yeah, I know. He will eventually do it, but if you want to do it like right away, you can shoot him and it'll work out. Oh well. Oh well. Anyway, what you actually can't do in, in order to grind souls super easily is walk up here, walk to that corner. Yeah, I'm totally bad. Yep, definitely. What you can do is walk up here, walk to this corner over here, and he'll kill everyone on the bridge for about 555 souls. A nice little bonus, right? Hey. Yeah, that's three. Nope. Just said nothing to go out. I'm just there. I don't see him do nothing. Something made a roar noise. Roar. He won't do anything. There we go, there we go. Drop. So now that he's down here, we can make a run for this bonfire. By lighting the bonfire and using it, we will be actually home free, he'll despawn. Ta-da! He's now up top again. And actually he just kind of flies away. Bye bye! There! The way is through and this gate is open! Ah! And here is actually one of the first covenants. However, you, you need to have an item called a Sunlight Medal in order to activate this. This is the Shrine of Sunlight. Unfortunately, we don't have a Shrine of uh, Sunlight Medal because <laughs> we haven't had the chance to encounter one yet. Oh, well. You actually can use humanity to hire a uh, Sun Bro, as they're called, or a Sunlight Warrior from the first bonfire to fight the demon at the Axe. We're playing offline right now, so we can't do that ourselves. We have to rely on NPCs. Oh well. Uh, let's see here. Want some more faith? It's probably good. Oh, yeah. There we go. Let's see if I can handle this. It's actually kind of tough. Now, when you come over here through this, you know, this little like gate over here, you might have the idea to climb the um, the tower. Like, you know, maybe supposed to go up the tower, right? Let's just say that's a bad idea, especially if you're not prepared for it. So you come up here, and you'll actually encounter a, well, a foe you probably don't have the chops to handle just yet. This guy. There we go. Ow. Jerk. Yeah, look at him. Look at this. Yeah, see? That's typically what happens to most people. And unfortunately, I didn't hit the button fast enough to drool. Oh, well. I should have hammered the button faster. But yeah. He kind of is a, yeah, he's a complete jerk. There we go. That's typically what happens to most people, so don't try that, let's just say. There's also another secret here. There's an enemy you, you see, like, right here, I think it is. Not this guy. Get out of here. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I'll, 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 thank, you, thank you so much for the raid, and thank you for popping in, and the follow and everything. This guy over here actually does not start, start behind this gate. If you're fast enough, you can kill him, and he won't actually respawn, because he actually runs behind this gate and closes it on you. Then you get to go down here to go through. That's it. See you, Yeah, see you later. Lewis, thank you so much for the raid. I right, get back here. Ow, jerk. Now, jeez, oh, these guys are just being mean today. There I go. You know, I didn't actually want to do that heal, but whatever. 
healing with a potion is a lot faster usually than the uh, casting ability. Well, that, that depends ultimately on your attunement, I believe. Yeah, they're being mean today. Well, then again, I don't typically go this way because I know I know how to like avoid having to go through here. But this is the way that most people will have to go. This key, however, is kind of important because it opens up a, se a secret door later on. Again, if you have the master key, you can actually skip that entirely. But we're not going to be doing the master key this run, this run. I mean, I do have the master key, but you know, I'm not going to be doing the using the uh, shortcuts it, it provides me. Just going to be making it a little bit easier myself by grabbing the holy sword. There we go, grab that. Turn around. And we're good. But yeah, you, you can just kind of walk across that thing. It's a little tight, of course, but you know, nothing too difficult. The Elden Symbol, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, who the... You, you shot me, jerk. I was walking through a wall and everything. Now, these guys over here are going to be your first major enemies you're going to encounter a lot of and not, you know... They're, they're fairly tough. They're, they're fairly common, too, so you have to watch out for them. I got Night Shield. They got a head, head tutor. Catch you later. Hey, Dora Toops, thank you so much for for the for checking me out. And hey, have, have a great day, okay? Thank you so much for popping in. Wow, he actually attacked me. What a weirdo. There we go. So long. Bye-bye. <laughs> Avidas and farewell. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> now, your movement speed actually does matter in a lot of ways. If you're walking around, enemies that are facing away from you will not hear you because you can... You have a certain amount of noise you make with your armor, so we're gonna walk. Oh no, actually, this guy's taking the right way. Oh. All right, there I go. If he was facing the opposite way, which I remember him doing because I'm dumb, then it would be able to sneak up, sneak up on him. Unfortunately, he's facing the way we don't want him to be, so we can't do that. Oh well. Again, faith build allows you to heal more often, which is nice. Now that we're going to take the shortcut over here. It's not really a shortcut, but it allows you to open up the shortcut back through here. You don't have to worry about the pig anymore. And there we go. This guy's dead. So we can now open this. There we go. Look at that. The gate is now open and will stay so forever. Unless somebody pulls the trigger on it, which would be bad. Because one thing invaders can do is actually run down here and pull that lever. Just be a jerk. <laughs> All kinds of like... Being a shenanigans like that are <laughs> something they can do. But usually it's not a big deal. Not, not really a big deal. Oh, a little too soon? Okay. There we go. Making a kind of tight circle around enemies that try and melee attack you is usually the best way to get into a, um, a backstab. However, that kind of thing is not really possible while locked into an enemy. So if you want a fish for backstabs, you just typically don't want to be locked. Now, I could be head up there, but actually it's a little bit fast, a little bit better for me if I head all over this way. This is an NPC over here who is very valuable, worth talking to. <laughs> and provides a valuable service. Ah. You hear that tinking? That is the smith. He's one of the only smiths in the game. There's like a three or four of them, and they all specialize in certain kinds of weapons. This guy is the guy who upgrades your basic weapons. Honestly, real well worth it, I'd say. Whoosh. There we go. I'm on great. If it requires smithing, then speak to me. All right. Not only that, we can also learn a, a gesture from him, and we can also purchase something here. He sells materials of the basic level for Titanite Shards. However, he also sells a key, some uh, key items here that allow you to craft at your own bonfire. So with these, you can actually upgrade your weapons at the bonfire, or armor, or your repair box. So it allows you to repair stuff. More importantly, he also sells a longsword. Longswords are good. They're very good, actually. You potentially want to buy one if you can't afford it. Neither. Now, for me, I actually like the swords. Very nice. But for us, unfortunately, the, the store straight sword here is essentially a long sword that's level five, meaning this long sword is will not be doing a lot of damage until the upgraded course, which we might be able to do, I think. You need. 
Nah, we don't have any shards. Okay, never mind. Because, unfortunately for us, the Astora Straight Sword is very good in the early game. Like, it's still strong right now. But it does not have the kind of scaling powers that this regular longsword will have. So you gotta watch out. Oh, Wolf, Wolf, Wolf does well. Yeah, take it easy, okay? Get some rest again. Yeah. So here, let me show you how much the power of the longsword is right now. And look at this. You get a backstab to eight, do 89 damage. It does not even have to kill him. That's how, how weak a general, like, starting weapon is. There we go. However, still the same techniques kind of apply. Just being able to move out of the way, backstabbing enemies is kind of important. If you want extra damage, you can also take the hard and get the sword of two hands and still do a little bit extra damage. Now, again, it's the attack moves... Blah. The move set is basically the same as the Astora Straight Sword. So you can do a, a very nice sweep with a two-handed uh, heavy attack. Long attack will just still be this overhead swing. It's not great, but, you know, it works. This guy is heavy and dangerous. So if you dodge to the left, he hits you with his uh, mace. However, you dodge to the right, he should miss you basically every time. There we go. You want to dodge towards his shield because it, it's not going to hit you that way. There we go. Now, you just notice he staggered there. If you hit him enough times with an attack, basically any attack anyway, he'll stagger. Uh, just about every enemy will stagger in the game. Though not all of them will, just about all of them. Just about all of them will. Even the bosses can stagger, though. It's pretty it's pretty rare you can hit him that hard. Though one boss actually dies to staggering. Uh, funnily enough. Hey, look at that! We got actually incredibly lucky and got a great sword for him, too. He normally only drops the uh, Titanite Shard there, which will upgrade your weapon for a small amount of well points. However, he doesn't typically drop the great sword, so we got pretty lucky there. The great sword, as you might guess, from being a giant sword, is a strength weapon. Oh, I didn't dodge it in time. I didn't block that in time, I guess. Oh, no thanks. Let's go ahead and drop down here and heal a little bit. Hi. Right. Bring it on. No thanks. They may, may have noticed something here. When I hit him, he staggers, basically. That's because he has low, what's called poise. Poise is how, it determines how often you stagger when hit. Which for us, basically every time, because we're wearing cloth. We're wearing a robe, for God's sake. You know what I mean? Whew. Now you do have to watch out though, certain enemies like this one here can actually backstab you if you're not careful. Also, ow. Jerk. Did not, oh, I did not... I, okay, okay. So what happened there is what's called queuing. I queued an attack on him, so when I, he hit me, he staggered me, but my queue said that the next move was going to be an attack. I was actually smashing the roll button, but because of the queue, it means I attacked him instead. And you have to be careful about pressing buttons too many times. If you, if you button mash, you can get punished for it really badly. Like I just did there. Yeah. So yeah, only make an attack when you feel like you're comfortable doing so. It's it's better to avoid get, taking damage than it is to try and like press your press your advantage. Dep that of course depends on the bosses. Some bosses require you to kind of rush them down. Now that's not true of most enemies. No oh, thanks. Again, you can mostly rely on being invincible while. Um, Doing, doing a special attack, like a backstab or a parry attack. Oh, wow, that, that actually has no range at all. Oh, man. I'm actually using something a little bit different. The weapon I typically use is called the Sunlight Straight Sword, which you guys should get from that NPC we saw earlier. What it does is it actually has a slightly longer range. It's not very different. It's about the same weapon, but it has a slightly longer range to the point where you can hit enemies from that distance away. And I'm very used to playing with that one because that's what I typically use while playing the game. Which, you know, sucks sometimes, but you're used to weapon. Oh, well. Enough. Let's hop, let's hop back to the sword. Now, you may notice here, the uh, straight sword has 80 attack and 80 magic on it. While the regular long sword has only 80 attack. Meaning this this straight sword does 80 magic damage on top of 80 regular damage. 
Now, this is not always the greatest thing because the defense applies directly to it. So you have 80 damage here, minus 80 uh, defense. And they have 80 magic attack versus 80 magic defense. So you spread your damage types out too far, you won't actually get that much more damage on it. It's better to have a higher number than to have more damage types in a lot of ways. Though some enemies are weak to certain kinds of damage, so, you know, it's kind of a balancing act, you know? Oh, well, that, that sucked. Bam! <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry, guys. I should be doing better. I should be not dying at all, huh? Well, that wouldn't be fun, now, would it? Oh, he didn't die. Oh, he's dead. Okay. So, say you want to get back to that place you started in. That you got a little trying area. Well, if you go over here and press this button, it'll actually head back down there. It's a straight line, straight shot downwards to where you were before. Kind of this little chapel area. Ah. Now, there's a few items lying around here and there, but the Fire Link Shrine has nothing really that great, so I don't have to worry too much about it. However, this guy's actually been here the entire time, but we're going to talk to him right now. I am Petrus of Thoroughland. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance, if possible. Now, he'll talk to you about joining a certain covenant, which does absolutely nothing besides realizing that, um... Distance. Look, like this guy to teach you spells. That it is not meant in ill will. No, go ahead. It's for you. Up a coin, huh? Oh my. You again. That's right. I know. How about this? I have to await my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Would that please you? So yeah, you can learn miracles from this guy. Then first... A covenant with the gods. And then you can take you can take this covenant. However, being the, the cleric, we already have this covenant, so you know, yeah. Let me share my miracles. You don't have to join it. Uh, we can learn a gesture, which is shrug. And we can also purchase items here. We can purchase all kinds of spells. However, most of these just kind of suck. They're not really useful. If you want to use a home word, that's okay, but it's not really worth a spell slot. There we go. The Thorland Talisman here, though, is fairly strong if you don't want to invest in faith. Until you hit about 30 faith, this uh, Talisman is actually the best one. So, yeah. Ah. There we go. We're going to rest up here. And you may notice something a little different here. See, we actually now have 10 flasks. That's because this bonfire here is actually tended by a person called a firekeeper. In which case, the firekeeper here is this lady right here. There we go. And what we can do is you can try to talk to her, which she, she can't speak, though. But we can also use her to reinforce our essence flask. Because we got a firekeeper's soul from that temple there. There's a firekeeper's soul there. Which allows us to increase our SS flask to plus one. So now it heals a little bit more. It's great. However, um, you can kill the firekeeper here in order to get another soul. However, if you do so, the bonfire will go out because her presence here is what keeps it alight. And gives you plus 10 um, Estus or uh, whatever, you know. Plus, plus five more Estus than normal. So typically, you want to keep her alive, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, I'll set back. Oh, I kind of wish I had my lightning bolt, but I don't. Oh, well. Vegeta's not looking very happy now, is he? That's okay. Uh, Dark Souls walkthrough or casual walkthrough? We're just kind of doing a casual run of the game. I'm going to be kind of explaining how to play, you know? <laughs> uh, no, no, thank you. There we go. Bam. How are you doing, Untiltable? I hope you're doing well. You know, for new players that have never played this game before, I, I'm happy to tell them how to, how to... Some of the techniques you can do to try and improve your stats or whatever. 
improve your, you know, performance in the game. Because I know it's because they're very difficult. It's not really that difficult comparatively, but it, it is difficult in some plenty of ways. Thank you. Hey, welcome in. I'm doing well. I mean, I started a little bit late today, as you might be able to tell. I normally should go live at one o'clock, but I had some. I had some business to attend to beforehand, you know. I, I was doing a stream with Brutal Sue for Luck Among Us. A bogus, I know. So, now let's, let's talk about humanity then. Let's see, where are we at? There we go, we have humanity here. We're gonna go ahead and pop. Oh, actually, that's, that's right. I don't have to do it one at a time anymore. Okay, there we go. By popping a humanity, not only do you recover all your HP, but you also get one point in the corner there. See that point? Now that we're here, we can use reverse hollowing and become human. Great, I say, great. Just all about the current builds too much armor, too much armor. Yeah, you're right. You're right, actually. You're right. And now that we're human, we can also do this: kindle the bonfire. Yeah. From now on, because the bonfire is kindled, you can actually get ten flasks instead of one, instead of five. But you know, if you need help. Get through an area, that's the best way to do it. Take it off. Okay, okay, I'll take it all off. There we go. Yay, looking good, huh? <laughs> and you can actually roll very very quickly because of it. Alright, I don't really need to take this off, of course. The armor's not very good. I can't take any more off. Well, actually, you know what? I can. There we go. Take off the, the arrows. I'm not using them anyway. Look at that beautiful thong or whatever. <laughs> no, thanks. Now, if I was playing online mode, I have the chance of being invaded now. Oh, a little too soon. Oops. There we go. I'll be on. A little bit of healing. There we go. I'm getting a little bit too hasty on my uh, parries. Oh, well. Get yeah, trunks, yeah. <laughs> And if you're playing online, though, however, most of the players you'll encounter will put their name signs here. That's where it's the easiest way to, you know, it's the start of the area, the zone, I guess, where you'll run to their signs right away. Now, unfortunately for us, I don't have Lightning Spear right now, so I can't have to deal with this the hard way. A little too soon. Oh, oh that's right. Certain enemies can backstab for you. So if they're in the attack animation and you're you're in backstabable range, that you will will take damage. For us, we're on stairs, so we can step over our head. Now, this enemy over here is called a... Actually, what is it called again? He's an enemy. He's a jerk. And all I do is he'll try and buff all the enemies around him. They'll do extra damage and kind of dangerous. However, if you just kind of do this, where you stand in the doorway, do a heavy swing that hits everyone in the way, they'll actually get caught in their own corpses and not be able to attack you, which is great. Ah, well, that guy can attack through walls, apparently, and is being a big jerk, so we're going to back off a little bit. And drink. Again, heavy sweep protects you from a lot of attacks. There should be a few more of them, and the big guy coming pretty soon. There we go. Those two are down. Easy. Not just him. He'll try and cast at us, but there's a wall here, so he'll get caught. And he can just hit him a few times, and he should die. There we go. He's dead. Now, he has a very, very rare chance to um, drop a, his spear, which is pretty good. However, he did not do it that for us, which sucks. Yeah, channelers. That's what they're called. Yes. There we go. The Chandler's Trident. You'll drop those. The Chandler Trident has a pretty unique ability, and that's able to cast a buff ability by hitting the heavy attack. Well, two-handed. It'll buff your attack power and any ally in, in range. It's nice. And in the gut. There we go. Yeah, that's what he gets. <laughs> And as much as you see from the wall here, this door can be opened by kicking it. There we go. Nice. Chandler's. Yeah, that's right. You know, we can break this guy out free of the barrel, and he'll jump on the floor and drop a humanity, which is nice. You could use another one of those. We used two of them already. Oh, Soltek here. Hello. Hey, welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, of course, shout out our pal, Soul Taker. Actually, you need to shout out a lot more people, don't I? Soul Taker. How, how are you doing, man? How how this... Were you streaming again? This hosting is for plebs. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Soltinger was playing uh, Among Us with me earlier today. It was pretty fun. So I'll shout out Rhea. Uh, just just did, just did her uh, 
our first game. Uh, illustrates. There we go. There we go. Oh, did I misspell that? I think I might have misspelled that. Oh. Did I misspell that? I think I did, didn't I? Uh, okay, let's try it one more time. And uh, they just finished their own their first game. Oh, okay, there we go. Huh, that's weird. And I should, how am I checking it out? I got to apply to it myself pretty soon. As as well as tubes and wolf who were here earlier. Okay, so this guy here is gonna say like, "Hey, I'm locked in here, dude. Help me out, man." I am in luck. Could you help me? Sure. There we go, he's free now. Thank you. Yes. Sincerely. I am Knight Lautrec of Karim. I truly appreciate this. And I guarantee a reward. Only later. Oh, so first one of this on Steam though. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yes, very sorry. Your reward will have to wait. I have just been freed. Allow me some time. All right, all right. So he says to wait later. And he actually will provide you with a reward. So hey, go ahead and do that. However, there are some other things that you need to do too. Let's check out Destroy the Shogun on Steam. Yes, do, definitely do that. Definitely do that. And also welcome in Soulticker. Check out Soulticker. He's a great streamer. Uh, I believe from Sweden, correct? It's just like me, though I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm mostly American-raised, so I don't speak Swedish very well, unfortunately. <laughs> but oh well. Anyway, because of our huge muscular body, we you can see that we're human, right? Which allows us to do something else. That is summon an NPC. Who's right here? It's Knight Solar. You saw him from earlier. You see this golden sign here? That means he's a knight of the knight of the sun. Oh, Malmo isn't sweet. Malmo is it's Denmark though. Okay, could have sworn Miss Anthem said you. Man, she's talking about somebody else. Whatever. <laughs> oh well. Good, 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 good. You know, a few Danish sleep are pretty good. Like, uh, Jokar Girl is also, also Danish, and she's very sweet. I like I like her a lot. Praise the sun! That's right! I also learned the praise the sun, uh, move from him as well. Not move, what's called again, the, uh, emote or whatever, you know. Now, certain enemies have weak points. Like, the dragon from before, his weak point is his tail. And this character, the Gargoyle, also has a weak point in his tail. So we can go ahead and slap his tail and break it off, actually. This is nice. For some odd reason, he can still hit you with it, even though it's not actually there anymore. But yeah. Oh, Seven, welcome in. There we go. He's going to attack me about halfway through his flight there. Then I'll get behind him and slap him in the tail. There we go. We got a free tail axe. Nice. Now, if you need help, you can always summon an NPC to help you out. However, this also can backfire in that the enemies will get extra health and attack power and whatnot while you have NPCs helping you out. So you got to watch out. And not get cooked by fire. Fire hurts. Uh, 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 no, thank you. No, thank you. I'm going to whoa, run this way and try and get behind the other guy. Come on, get over here. Oh, right, this guy's not really a big threat to us. We can just kind of slap him a few times and then probably go down. Uh, 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 if I had higher faith anyway. I kind of forgot to invest in faith and invest in endurance instead. And there we go. <laughs> Nudist warrior, that's right. And he, it, we got lucky and dropped the gargoyle helmet too. Because we summoned a knight of the sun, he drops us a uh, sunlight medal for us. Which is really nice. It allows us to enter the covenant of the sun. It's cool. Also, if you are a sunlight medal, if you're a sunlight warrior as well, you also get the sunlight medal for helping somebody out. So, by getting enough medals, you can actually earn some some spells and other rewards from the Covenant. It's really nice. <laughs> I'm doing well, yes. Phantom Tail is a thing. Yeah, for some reason, it's a ghost tail. Don't ask me why. There we go. I gotta say, though, Vegeta's looking pretty good, don't you think? Well, if I could look at his head, anyway. All right. He got kind of a haircut, but you know what? It's fine. There you go. Vegeta. <laughs> got back from setting up some advanced, advanced settings. Oh, yes. I can't wait to see how it turns out, huh? <laughs> Hopefully soon, anyway. There we go. So we rang the first bell. There's going to be another one only. As good as Origami Dog here? Oh, thank you. Uh, Miss Anthem did most of the work, though. I, I don't really know much about 
about uh, sound. Now, if you want to be like ballsy, you're gonna, you're gonna have to just walk off the edge here, and you'll pop, you'll land on this little platform. But I, I never do that myself. It's it's dangerous. This, however, I'm fairly certain you will die from the fall. So try not to fall, fall to your death, huh? By holding circle, you'll actually slide down a ladder a little bit faster. Greetings. I am Oswald of Kareem, the pub. That's right. For thee, a warm welcome. Cometh out to confess, but you kill this. For indeed, your sin is my man. So this guy is here to help you remove "quote unquote" sin to get for killing NPCs or doing certain things that are considered sinful. Uh, by paying him a ton of money, you can remove that sin, which also stops a covenant from attacking you. Called the uh, oh, I did not mean to, did not mean to do that. What, what happened there? What, what that happened? I don't, oh, it's because my finger tracked across the pad here. You can use the trackpad in the middle of the uh, PS4 controller to do certain emotes, and I keep doing them accidentally. This guy will also sell these, these items called Purging Stones, which will remove your curse. And I think he carries a limited number of them, like five or so. I don't quite remember how many. But buy these and you, you'll be able to remove um, curse from you. Curse is really bad in that it cuts your health in half. Maximum health in half. So you can't recover much more than half health. Which, as you can see from our tiny health pool, is really bad. But only one enemy in the entire game will actually do that to you, so it's not really a big deal. Just don't get caught by him, okay? <laughs> well, them. There are mul there's multiple of them, but only one kind of enemy will do it. And jump. There we go. About to get stabbed in the back. And he's trying to stab me in the back, but I'm going to run. Running away! Running away! Yeah! <laughs> They can the DS. Yes, you can use a really long hand and bash into things. I, I think it's also in Bloodborne as well, which I, I might play in the future. But for now, we're just kind of doing a playthrough of Dark Souls. Well, something here. Thank, thank you for the follow. What, hey, were you not following me? Ah, uh, well, th thank you for the follow. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal either way. Let's see. Endurance. We're gonna actually buff Endurance at 20. Yeah, don't. Ah, uh, no worries. A little bit of vitality. Just get a little bit more health. Vital. Each of these stats actually has a kind of plateau they'll slow down their improvements over the course of time which sucks but you know not it, it won't really stop you from kicking all kinds of butt now over here is actually getting the most important thing improving your equipment improving your equipment is vital to success in dark souls uh don't have anything worthwhile okay don't get yourself killed neither if <laughs> you had your list because you ready you through that's weird Huh. Well, now you're here. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's just Twitch being weird. No, thanks. This enemy is fairly dangerous, but if you walk around to his right side or run forward, you'll mostly likely not get hit behind this arm up front here. Well, if he jumps in the air, you walk away from where he used to be, and he'll miss you. Whew. Yeah, just walk away and he'll be fine. Our things become difficult when he gets himself on top of this pillar here. So be careful about where you, he ends up being, you know? There we go. I don't know, back up a little bit. He's got very long reach on that staff of his, and he can jump pretty far, so you got to watch out. All right, come on, buddy. Come on. He's got he's to go for a big sweep enemy. Or jump. Yeah, see that jump there? Nasty. One hit kill. It wouldn't be a one hit kill if I had armor on, but, you know. <laughs> Pants. Not required. Pants are optional in this game. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> oh, well, well. And now I look all like beef jerky. Mm. <laughs> anyway, what's important here is not actually killing, kicking his butt. You don't actually need to go this way at all until much, much later in the game. But if you can just like sneak past him, you can actually make your way to some another area. It's very nice. gonna run forward he's gonna jump yeah and land on our butt now what you saw happen last time was actually called counter damage this game will actually add additional damage to what to you or your enemies if they're doing something so if you, if you like trying to attack an enemy and they hit you while you're trying to attack them before you can hit them you'll take extra damage and the same is also in true in reverse though typically your enemies will have a lot more hit points than you do like an insane number of hit points 
There we go. Ah. Here is Dark Root Garden. Now, getting past the uh, these enemies can be a little bit difficult for the newbie player, but you can just hit them off a cliff because they back off every time you hit them. Just be wary of bush of the bushes around here, because if you walk over here, you'll see this bush on the ground here and walk past it. Oh no, it's behind you! You're ambushed between two guys. Sucks. There we go. Another death. Our coming here is actually a very good idea because these moss clumps here are very good for reducing certain damage types. If you want to cure poison or bleed, they're or toxic too. You can come here to get those mosses to cure those. Ah, there we go. And this game actually has a lot of secrets to it, let me just tell you. Like this door right here, you have, to, you have to kind of find a way through it. Or fight the Hydra to go around past the door. But, you can also go over here, hit this wall, and there's a bonfire here. Nice. You can rest here and, you know, <laughs> recover from the battles you had. Ah. Now for us, because we're a... Um, we're a faith-based ca character. We actually want to go over here and fight a boss that's over here. The boss is very much uh, optional. You don't have to fight them if you're not a faith-based character. However, for, for faith characters like for like me, it's a good idea. Also, going over here and grabbing this item over here is also a very good idea. This item here is called the Elite Knight Set. It's a set of, well, armor that is very efficient, let's just say. It's not the most powerful armor, but for weight class to armor protection, it's one of the best. One of the best in the game. There we go. We're going to come back over here and see if they follow me. They probably will. However, the giant knights have made a stone here are not worth fighting because they not only take a ton of damage to go down, they also have some really nasty effects they can do on you. Like slowing you, which is really bad in a game that requires you to dodge a lot of the time. Oh, that hurt. Oh, thanks. Now, if you look at my stamina bar here in the corner, uh, you can see when I'm running out of stamina. When you're out of stamina, you can't roll, you can't run, and you also can't attack. So you got to be careful about that. It'll recover automatically a lot of the time, but when you run out, it'll actually stop you from doing things for a, a short while. Like, you know, let me just roll a whole bunch of times here. Now I can't roll until it comes back to at least a little bit. Which can be a not it's not a very long time, but can be enough to get you killed, so you gotta watch out. Don't spam roll if you can get away with it. Now if you head over to that area we're just in, you can actually go around and find a tree and kill it off past here. Or we can do this, where we just kinda walk off this cliff and drop stab. There we go, see? Nice. Not only this path is over here is kinda hidden behind a fake tree. There we go. Yeah, you can, you can kill this fake tree over here and go over there. Or you can just walk off the cliff there and make it. You'll all, you will always survive no matter what your health is. Well, no matter what your uh, maximum health is. If you're full health, you'll survive. Otherwise, you don't. Ugh. So why would you want to come back down here? Well, there's a few reasons, but the major one of them is that there's an item down here called the Wolf Ring. What the Wolf Ring does is boost your poise stat by 50 points. It's very nice, very nice. You go over here. And we run. Uh huh. Keep running, keep running. There we go. We'll encounter a stone knight who will very slowly stand up and try and attack us. Best option here is to ignore him and grab the ring as soon as you can. Like so. Now that we're here, you have to do a run and then press circle again while running to jump. Press the run button again to jump. Now we're here, where we were before. On the way back, you know. There we go. The wolf ring is a very, very good uh, item for the coming area. So I want to make sure I go get it. And to show you guys where it is. In case you wanted to, you know, a little bit of help pushing through the next area. Because the next area is typically considered a... Uh, how do I say this? A Not stall zone, but... A real, like, checkpoint for people to play in the game. If they... Um, most people will, try, will get like stuck there for quite a while. And th this ring will actually help you a lot. So will the armor, too, thinking about it. 
There we go. Unfortunately, we didn't get a single regular uh, purple moss, but that's okay. That's how life is sometimes. You don't get the moss you want. Let's see here. What, what do we got here? Here, look, it's that guy from before. Oh, but he's too heavy. So we can't really wear that. Can't wear the whole set right now. Let's try some pants on. Eh, it's still not that great, but you know what? It, it works okay. Now we're very heavily protected comparatively before. And we have tons of, um... Tons more stuff. We got the ring. Ooh, careful, careful. Uh, let's see here. We want to reinforce our weapon. The long sword. There we go. Once. Twice. And go buy another shard. Because we can afford it. Ta-da! There we go. Look at that. Yeah, we're going to roll up hill. Roll up stairs. It's not the most uh, comfortable looking, but you know what? It works for us, right? <laughs> Now, this area is actually called the, uh, about, not halfway point, but it's kind of like the halfway dungeon. Once you beat this thing, you're about halfway through the game. A little bit more than that, maybe. But if you head there now, you can actually encounter this guy. He's one of the best NPCs in the game. Hmm. He's got an onion for a head. Hmm. 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 Oh, forgive me. I was absorbed in thought. I am Ziegmeier of Katarina. Quite honestly, I've run flat up against a wall, or a gate, I should say. The thing just won't budge, no matter how long I wait. And oh, have I waited. So, here I sit, in quite a pickle, weighing my options, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Sigmar here is famous for being kind of uh, slow on the uptake, let me just say. He's not dumb, just that he's not very uh, good the whole, like, initiative thing. <sighs> yeah, yeah, welcome in, welcome in. <laughs> but if you talk to each NPC while you see... If you find each NPC and talk to them, you'll be able to complete their quests. Like, that guy has his quest, the yellow guy we saved earlier has a quest, and so does the uh, the night dude that we helped that helped us out earlier. So we're all geared up. How about we make a quick stop by the, um, the Firelink Shrine? You may notice we're actually walking a little bit slower. Not a huge amount slower, but a little bit. But we're taking a significant less damage. Look at this. He stabs me in the chest for about a decent amount, a decent, like, a good 60% of what we did before when I was naked, you know? And that's just kind of the start of it. By investing in upgrades, you can actually improve your armor by significantly more than that. It, by fully upgrading your armor, you'll actually double its effectiveness. So instead of taking about 60% damage, you'll probably take about 40% damage, or, or even more than that. It really does add up over time. There we go. Oh. Here we are. Okay, okay, what do we got? What do we got? I'm gonna be kind of a jerk here, just to make, just to make life a little bit easier for myself. And just because it's a tutorial kind of playthrough. What you can do here is actually... In, I'm gonna sleep, have a painful day of going through... Okay, get, get some rest, get some, get some rest, okay? Uh, you know, I mean, if you've had, you've been up for a, quite a while, I'm fairly certain. Down to this guy, he actually will give you a reward. I have your reward. Please accept it. There we go. We got a, a sunlight medal. We now have two. For me. <laughs> not enough for you. Well, let's not be greedy now. <laughs> now this guy and his sinister laugh here actually has a fairly long side quest you can do. However, he also carries the best best ring in the entire game. So what we can do is actually just punch him in the face. Yeah. Eh. Are you sure about this? Eh. 
There we go. So now he's standing up because he got staggered. Now that he's standing up, we can also kick him in the face, like so, and knock him off this cliff. Bye bye And he's dead. Now, his stuff kind of fell down there, and we don't have it, which sucks, right? Well, what you can do is actually quit out of the game, like so. And jump back in. Continue. And his stuff will be right here, where he was before. There we go. We're now fully equipped with all the nice stuff. This ring will boost your health, your stamina, and your equipment load whenever it's equipped. Meaning we can now have a, a significant boost to basically all our stats <laughs> without having to do anything. However, I don't really need it myself. I mean, I can, I can do just fine without it. But for a new player, that might be a good idea. His side quest is also takes kind of a long time, and you get the same reward anyway, with a few extra bonuses, but it's not really not worth it. We're just like kicking off the cliff there. <laughs> uh, I probably should try and get some more levels, I think, in about, but you know what? Let's go ahead and keep going. I'll show you what, what's next. That's kind of one of the shortcuts you can do to get yourself some more, some more, uh, basically some free levels in a lot of ways. The major thing though is that you can't remove the ring from your equipment slot, otherwise it'll break permanently, so you gotta watch out for that. You can get a replacement, but the replacement is very, very difficult to get your hands on. And let's just say it's not really worth it, honestly. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, a little too soon. Oh, nuts. Okay. Nope. A little too soon. Okay. Drink. Oh. There we go. I took the hit on purpose because I have poise now. Uh, 50, the armor gets any poise and so does the uh, ring. I can now swing through their attack and take the damage and still hit them anyway. So it's actually a good way to uh, make sure you kill an enemy is to just attack through it using armor. That's why armor is very good, else by also you know reducing damage, but also pre protecting you from uh, you know being stun locked. And that stun locking effect is actually very important in the next coming boss, where you can get staggered very very easily. Ow, jerk! There we go. And the healing ability of the cleric is very very good. However, it takes kind of a while to kick in, so you want you want to find a nice safe spot to do it. There you go, gotcha. Hey, jerk. There we go. Rest up here. And because we have sunlight medals, we can actually go over here and join this covenant now. That's what we should be able to, no? That's weird. Man, I need to have a higher faith. Oh, I think you need a minimum faith of 20 or something like that. I don't think my faith is high enough. Oh, well. Because the dragon isn't here, you know, right now anyway. We're actually free to cross the bridge whenever we want. And get this weapon here. This weapon is actually a very powerful weapon. Now, it's not really my style, so I don't usually use it myself. There we go. In fact, I pretty, pretty typically don't use heavy weapons or shields. Also, ow, my fire. I'm being on fire. Ah. But yep, the dragon is back now. Gotta watch out for that. Off the cliff we go. We go ahead and rest in this bonfire. And head back up. <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun just kick him off the cliff there. So that extra health and stamina is actually very nice because it's actually very, very difficult to boost stamina. Stamina is a stat that you don't really have a lot of ways to boost outside of this ring that you can get from this guy. So it's definitely worth getting. There we go. We're all dead. And now we can take our chances to run home free, hopefully. Eh, 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 eh. There we go. I think we're safe. I hope so, anyway. 
Now, is he still here? Is he? I think he's still. Yeah, there he is. He's here again. Let's see. Someone in before. He actually invited us to join his covenant. Hello there. The sun is a wondrous body, like a magnificent father. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. I could have sworn he invites you to join the covenant if you summon him. Oh, hello. No, I guess not. Never mind. Oh, I don't think my faith is high enough. I need to put more points into faith. Oh well. Here we go. We now have the basement key, so we can actually enter this area and go all the way down to the depths of the berg. <laughs> it's called the berg. The lower berg and the upper berg. The burger, you know what I mean? This here is actually my favorite uh, summoning area because a lot of people need help here. It's very, very difficult. Unfortunately, they don't typically survive very long, so a lot of times it doesn't really help out. If you need to get back here quickly, though, go ahead upstairs and just open this door. There we go. Ah. Oh. So now if you want to, we can actually rest this bonfire and, you know, make our way back if you want from there. Very short walk, and now we can get back to that area whenever we need to. <laughs> he tried to jump attack me and fell off a cliff there. Enemy AI is not, particu not particularly bright, though, so, you know, <laughs> they can get themselves killed pretty easily. That includes your allies as well as your enemies. There we go, nice. Get out of here. And down here introduces us to a new type of enemy. Enemy I don't really like fighting, but they're very, very pain annoying too. It's the dog! There we go. By standing right here, if, you, if you're fast enough actually, you can get down here before he corners you and get a, get a long swipe on him. So it get you, the dog, and probably the other one as well. There we go. This long sweep here is actually very nice for getting rid of most enemies. Now, remember, my, my tips are mostly for the long sword, but if you have similar weapons, you can do something like this. This door will actually open to attack you with a thief, but if you jump attack it, you'll be able to stab him in the in the face through the door. That's pretty nice. Now, if you walk down here, the doors will open like so, and they'll attack you. Now, hey. Oh, you got me, jerk. These bandits here can backstab you and parry you if you're not careful. But they're not really a bit, that big a threat. Yeah, see, he parried me again. Because their damage is very, very low. Jerk. There we go. Woo. So, like, these doors are now open. However, the guys that are in there are already dead. They'll actually attack you from behind to get the free backstab on you if you're not careful. Anyway, this game is one of the most important tips about this game is to take it easy and walk slowly through it. Uh, let's see, this door over here can be opened if we had the. Uh... Help me. Damn! How, how did this ever happen? If you bought the residence key from the guy in the merchant upstairs, like this, that merchant guy all the way in the beginning of the game from upstairs has something called the residence key, which goes actually right here. And the guy inside this building has the ability to teach you how to cast intelligence spells. It's a little bit hard to get your hands on intelligence spells. But they also do a lot more, a lot more effective in terms of combat-wise than faith spells are. There we go. There we go. Whew. These guys can hit you very, very many times. Like every single time he swings his arms, there is an attack, and it'll hurt really bad. So watch out for that. They'll add up really, really fast. So watch out. But again, as a faith character, we can just kind of tank our way through most things and heal up when we need to. It's very nice. I kind of wanted to spend some more time upgrading my stuff, but we'll worry about that in the coming days. Again, having a weapon that does a large sweep here is actually very, very nice because the corners are very close together, so you can actually hit multiple people at once very early on. Hello, Joey, how's it going? So we look down here, and all the doors will open right now. There we go. So actually, if you wait right here and swing now, 
you can sometimes catch the dog and all three of the bandits at once. That wasn't a very clean one, but it did, did okay for what you wanted. Ah, you got me. He didn't capitalize on it, though. We managed to catch the dog, but the, the bandit decided to parry all day long. And, well, whatever. But kick him in the face, because he can't parry a foot. <laughs> for some reason. I'm doing well, Joey. How are you doing today, by the way? Ah. There we go. Uh, sold lost undead or whatever. And we can keep pushing on. Now, right here is actually where the boss is. But for now, I won't do that just yet. Actually, going to go over here and take care of these guys. Right here behind this corner is another enemy. So if you can just kill him. There you go. This guy won't be much of a big deal. Just looks a little funny for a little while, but you feel fine now. That's good. Uh, take it easy today, though. Don't, don't like, push your... Stress your gut out too much. Just, you know, get, get a, a few movements around, but don't, like, like do any heavy lifting out of that. You might get in trouble <laughs> with your <laughs> intestines. Hey, take it easy today. It's always good to get some rest, right? That's the important thing. This guy will try and shoot you, but he's not very accurate, and you can just kind of stab him and be free. There you go. And over here is another NPC. She's actually very nice to have on your side. You buy some of my moss. I need your souls. <laughs> she sells moss, and the moss is very, very handy, actually. And this, this just looks cool here. But the moss is very useful. In fact, so is the transient curse. There we go. Come again, if you because what moss does is, is remove poison. And let's just say there's an entire swamp of poison later on. So the ability to, you know, cure yourself of poison is very nice. Very nice indeed. Not only that, there's also a shortcut right here you can open up. So, yeah, just, just do that. <laughs> Relaxing and lying in bed, yeah. Well, that, that's great to hear, Joey. By the way, if you guys want to play with me on uh, Dark Souls, I am playing on PS4. So if you have a PS4, we can play together sometime if you want to. I'm also just kind of doing a walkthrough here of how I play the game and basically get some tips to new newbie players, which I think would be nice. It's very nice, but if you want to play, I'm happy to do that as well. There we go. There we go. Ah. And here's the boss, though, that most people need a lot of help with. It's It's tough. Basically, what happens is you walk in here, and it, it takes one, two, three jumps, and then you roll. You want to avoid getting caught in this corner here, because then you'll die otherwise. And you want to try and avoid his attacks. The most important part here is to actually kill these dogs, because they'll stagger you, and you don't want them to be staggered. Uh, go ahead and drink while I'm here. There you go. Off the cliff here. Yep. There we go. So now the dogs are dead, we should be basically home free to take them on one-on-one. -on -one. He's not that scary one-on-one, -on -one, honestly. There we go. Now, the advantage of my sword here is actually kind of worn off. At this point, you should have a plus five weapon anyway. So it's not that big a deal that, that we have one. That's about keeping your distance whenever he tries to attack. And taking advantage of his long wind-ups is very important on this boss. Remember, roll into his attacks to avoid him. Though, again, that, that two-handed swing there is very slow, so you have to watch out for it. Oh, we're gonna drink, we're gonna get jumped on. No, I guess not. A little slow this time. If you're in a pinch, though, and you can't avoid an attack, it's always okay to block by hitting the L1 button. Like so. I blo like I blocked my sword there. There we go. Oh. However, you can avoid his attacks simply by walking at him in the right way. Like, if you walk right here, he'll almost always miss you. However, his second attack will always hit you, so try to, try to you know, roll out of the way. And there I go. Say, so you want to wait for those three seconds. This is, the entrance to the level is the most important part of this fight. One, two, three, roll. You want to get out of the way and not get caught in this corner. It's, it's very difficult, <laughs> let me just say. <laughs> well, there we go. We got him. And with him dead, we actually get a key. 
You have on the game for a year when he first got to this boss? Yeah. He's a real sticking point for basically anyone playing the game. But th that's why I'm wearing this heavy armor here and have this wolf ring. Because it'll prevent the dogs from... It'll help prevent the dogs from staggering you, which is very important for that fight. <laughs> I mean, I probably will do a kind of a walkthrough of Dark Souls 3 if you guys want to, too, as well. There we go. Depths are now open. Though, I actually want to go back and spend my souls and stuff, so we're going to go do that. How are you doing, Plasma? What, what, what's up, dude? Ah. Get past the tutorial, boss. Yeah. You can be kind of a pain. Mostly just kind of wail on him as much as you can. It, it, it's, uh... And try and dodge into his attacks whenever possible. Though he can just kind of go wild on you if you're not, if you're not careful. The best thing you can do is try and wail on, on him as much as possible while he's transforming. Because that's the best way to get him down to low health. And just push to get that last bit clear. <laughs> but we opened up the secret way, so I'm going to go ahead and actually head back up towards where he is. Can I praise the sun? I do not have that ability just yet. Sorry. I need to join the Covenant of the Sun, which I'm planning to do, but my faith isn't actually high enough to do so. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> there we go. I thought just having a sunlight uh, metal would let you do it, but no, I think you need to actually help somebody else out. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. That's right. Sorry, I, I would do it, but I, I just don't have the, uh, the move just yet. This guy's actually uh, actually updated. Him and his gring are gonna go head down to the catacombs to to uh, you know kick butt. Well, we'll see how that happens, but we'll, once we get there, uh, got past his first pace once we got wrecked. Okay, yeah, just kind of try and dodge into his attacks and keep your distance. Well, not don't actually do that. Don't 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 keep your distance. Try and get as close to you as you can to uh, avoid his attacks. It's actually a lot easier to avoid his attacks from from up close than from far away. It has been kind of a while since I played Dark Souls 3. I play this game a lot more often, so we'll, we'll see once we get there. Well, you probably will play Dark Souls 3 and Dark Souls 2 as well. Anyway, like I said before, armor and, and weapons are very important, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade them there. I wish I had Bloodborne and Dark Souls 1 by the time I started Dark Souls 3. If you're done with them, then that guy becomes nothing. Yeah, if you do any of the Dark Souls, other Dark Souls series, the other ones become a lot easier. But yeah, that, that Capra Demon there is a real sticking point for a lot of players. Because it's, it's just that opening there can really stun stun you. You get flat into the ground, the dogs jump on you, and man, it's bad. You need you really, really need to get rid of the dogs. They're really bad. Because again, why you want a sword like this, or something that has a large sweep in order to catch multiple enemies at once. It's very nice. Well, <laughs> Here's going to buy a bunch of these. Eight of them, I guess. And upgrade our sword once more. There we go. Four and there we go. Okay. Don't get yourself. Neither of us want to. There you go. Just gonna go ahead and pop one of these souls. We got. See, we got quite a few of these, so we might as well just use them all, right? I oh, did not even drop that. Use four. Boom. I right, got nice eight hundred souls. In fact, we have several more. We might as well just go ahead and just upgrade all our stuff while we can, huh? Got six of these souls. Just go ahead. And... There you go. Twenty-four hundred. Pretty nice. Uh, one of these. 800 more. Nice. Two of these for another 2,000. And this big guy here is about, I think, 2,000 by itself. There we go. Look at that. Let's go ahead and reinforce our weapon. Our armor and weapons, actually. Purchase. I uh, don't need to worry about that just yet. Uh, weapons up to five. There we go. Nice. Armor, we want to upgrade the, the the suit first. The suit is the most effective of the lot, so you want to upgrade that first. There we go. Thinking about it, though, I probably should have gone out of my way to get my hands on the the ring. The okay, first one is always going to be the most brutal, regardless of which one it is. Yeah, exactly. Dark Souls 2 is also kind of weird because it's not quite the same as 1 or one or 3. It's got a lot of weird, like, additions to it and kind of strange stats and very, like, janky kind of feel to it, so it might not prepare you as well for the other games. Bloodborne is also similar in a lot of ways, where it's very, very different. Actually, I've never actually beaten the Bloodborne thinking about it. That's because I'm very... 
picky about the way I do things. Alright, where are you at? Come on. Oh. So remember, being able to move, like, move your character correctly is actually the best way to avoid damage. Like, like so, see? You can actually just walk away. You don't have to roll. It's, it's the most effective way to avoid damage, but it's also, like, takes some practice getting used to. If I'm careful, I might be able to walk up to this guy and stab him in the butt before he, the other guys can do anything. Sorry! <laughs> I got him! Oh, oh, and then he got me, jerk. I see how it is. There we go. There we go. Whew. Got that guy. Go ahead and heal. Sweep attack. Just punch through his attack, and there we go. The other hand is genius. One of your favorite all of them. Yeah, actually, I do like Bloodborne a lot. So I never beat the game because I'm very... Uh, how do I say this? <laughs> I I only play my way, you know. I don't, I don't really follow the way that I probably should play the game. I only play my way. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Again, big sweep. Get all four of them in one hit. You saw that? You saw that kind of big sweep there? It's very nice for clearing up rooms of enemies like this. At least the tutorial boss some month in the future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll probably play Dark Souls three if you want some want some help. Uh, I'll show you how how I do it, and then maybe you could you know pick up some tips from that. Was well, uh, Interest of Souls player number one? Yeah, I, I do like Bloodborne a lot. I, I still need to play it. I need to be it one of these days. I never have, but I'm gonna be playing the way I play. It, you know, I'm just kind of dumb that way, I guess. There we go. Yeah, eat it. Not enough badge points and blood points for you. <laughs> Probably, yep. Yeah. So honestly, armor is very important in this game, so... Investing in stamina can actually be a very good payoff. Though it depends on what you want to do. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mostly... I build Blood Tinge in Bloodborne and it'll do nothing else. So, uh... It's kind of... <laughs> Difficult sometimes. Because Blood Tinge is not the most effective of a uh, build, let's just to say. There we go. Oh, okay. Mm, I probably should not have spent all those points on. Oh well, oh well. Well, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. He's right here. If you walk up that, those stairs, he won't hear you, and you'll be behind him without him noticing. It's nice. Blood Tinge is good in New Game Plus. Yeah, but in standard game, it's not great. <laughs> Though, again, I, I just went with Evelyn the entire time. I probably should have um, gone with the, the Devil Pistol instead. Because Devil Pistol has more damage and, you know, more... It's just not efficient at, through bullet-wise, you know what I mean? I like strength build, yeah. Strength is very good. Strength is almost always good. It's never amazing, but strength is almost always at least good. So, I'm dumb, and I did this wrong, so I, I had to grind a little bit to get some more souls, but that's okay. We'll be fine. What we want to do is buy something called the repair box, as well as the armor box. Buying the weapon box is not as important, but the repair box and the... Uh, the armor box is more important. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Armor box. There we go. With the armor box, we can actually upgrade our armor at any bonfire. Meaning, and because armor is not cast due to embers, we don't have to worry about ascending it either. Nope, thank, no thanks. How does the longsword perform? I don't know. It's fully upgraded now. It's still not that great. Uh, I see. But yeah, just kind of hug him in the in the shoulder there, and he won't be able to hit you. There we go. Go and give him a stagger. He jumps. We back away. We walk into his arm again. And he jumps away. Huh? That's, that's always a pain when he does that. Ow! Because he can hit me. Heal up in his cor in his el armpit. You just kind of walk into his armpit, and you'll most likely stop him from hurting you. Oh, though sometimes he kind of pushes you into it, which sucks. 
I'm gonna heal. He's gonna jump attack me, but I'm gonna be too far away from him to hurt me. He's gonna try and go for a... A slam? Why? I'm not even close to him. What are you doing, AI? What are you thinking? There we go. We're behind him now. We're good. Again, I have a that bad habit of swinging way too much, so my, my stamina is too low. But I found out that you can mostly just walk away from this guy, so it's not really a big deal. Only way does this move when it jumps away from you is it become a problem. Come on. Come on. Ow. Heal. But yeah, this game is very much about positioning as well as, like, movement style, you know? Just where you stand, not, not just dodging, is important. Die! <laughs> All things like armor, weapon damage, you know, that kind of thing can also add up, too. Die! Eh, he got me, darn. There we go, okay. Hey, what's up? This things look really easy. <laughs> I do, don't I? Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, it's all about knowing where to stand. Uh, in fact, there's an enemy called the Pursuer in uh, Dark Souls 2 that a lot of people have trouble with. But honestly, you can walk at him and avoid all of his attacks. It's, it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So we buy here is the repair box because now we can repair our stuff wherever we want to. Because our longsword here is capped at level 5, we can't upgrade it anyway, so we don't really need to worry about getting the upgrade box. So, having the repair box and the armor upgrade box is very good. <laughs> However, I'm out of Estus and I'm out of heal, so I might as well just go ahead and rest while I'm not here. There we go. It's definitely not that easy. <laughs> but yeah, let's see. I know what to grab, what to do. So I, I'm very much used to this kind of game. I used to do challenge runs all the time back in back in the day on my own time. You know, I, I didn't used to stream it, but I used to do challenge runs on my own time. It's because it's fun. Because I think the most important part of this game is how you play. It's having fun. And fashion souls is how I have fun. So getting costumes and whatnot, just, just to dress up and play as a character, using their abilities and whatnot. That's how I used to play this game. And it kind of necessitated me being able to get good at these early areas, you know? Oh, he's gonna stab me. Oh, no, no, he's not. Never mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you can just literally walk past most enemy attacks, though. As long as you know what you're doing. That's the important part. And a big part of that is learning the game, of course. Because every time... Just like in Mega Man or... Uh, a lot of, like... What's it called? Like, Mega Man and... Ninja Gaiden and whatnot. A lot of it's just learning how to, how to do it, you know? What to do with certain areas, not just, like... How to play. <laughs> now, if you want to get a secret, there's actually one up here. Oh, I actually messed it up already. Whoops. You want to be up on that roof there, and they can jump across to some other secret area. But I'll show that off much later when I'm more powerful. But now I'll just kind of walk over here and, you know, blast the bad guys. Now, let's just do a little bit of running, huh? I don't really want to hold you guys up for too long. Castlevania, too. <laughs> yeah, Castlevania especially. Whew. Sword. Again, sweep. He's behind me, and I still hit him anyway. This this two-handed sweep of the longsword is very good <laughs> for cleaning regular guys out, and it'll catch a lot of a lot of um, players unawares too. Because there we go. Though I don't usually do a PVP very often. But see, I, I, I can just walk away from that. <laughs> just being able to move correctly and stand in the right spot is a very good part of this game. Um, I've not played very much Ninja Gaiden or Castlevania, but I do play a lot of Mega Man. I, I, I could basically just do a run through of Mega Man X in, a, in like a couple hours if I really want to. Though I haven't done that in stream yet. I've been thinking about doing it, but I don't have the, uh... Wait, I could probably hook up the SNES to my... Yeah, I could probably capture the SNES and do that maybe sometime. That'd be fun. It doesn't spare souls, let's go ahead and talk to her. And buy some more moss, because we're here, why not, you know? Also, there's a there's a tech, there's a thing in this game called drift items. If you drop an item somewhere, a certain kinds of items, not all items will work, and uh, they'll actually drift to another player's world. And from them, they can actually find you know that item, or eventually it'll transform into an upgraded item, and, and to the point where it'll become like a weird creature you can find and kill. 
They're very rare. I've seen like two in my entire gameplay. But if you want to make those, you can actually buy the purging stones from that lady and just plant them wherever you want to. It'll be fun. And hopefully they'll turn into a crab or whatever. Ow, jerk. I attacked a little bit too late there. Oh, I guess I'll just backstab you instead. There we go. Boom. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Goes good. I'm taking a little break to uh, salt my fish for uh, dinner. Uh, do I do I have the uh, capacity to carry the Dragon Crush shield? Nah, I can't really carry it. It's a little too slow. Did it destroy it? Because melee fist with those three seers? Okay, great. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. Oh, uh, ah. Yeah, I think the shield's a little too heavy right now. We don't have the stamina to carry it around. There is an enemy I skipped out on earlier. You can handle if you have the uh, parrying down. However, I don't really want to do that because my damage is not high enough to really take him down very quickly. Though I do kind of want to kill him eventually, I'm not going to do it now. If I have it closer to Red Dimension 2 at 99%, he's got like, hunting requests. And another thing that uh, say that it's all at the ending. Okay. Oh, you haven't done that part yet? Okay. Well, don't worry about it. It doesn't end the game if you do it. There we go. I don't think, anyway. Go for it. Go for it. Again, dogs are a pain in the butt. Make sure they're dead. They're a real big pain, because not only do they attack you from weird angles, they also make you bleed, which is terrible. Oh, hello. Ah, get out of here. Oh, he's, the uh, the butcher is active. That's not good. Ow. Oh, he got me. Oh, she got me, actually. It's a woman. Uh, heal. Thanks. Okay, thank you for laying my head. I'm going to move now. No, thanks. There we go. We're upstairs. Or not dead, luckily. We're going to heal. There's another dog on our butt. The dogs are a real pain in the butt. Eh. Get out of here, dog. Eh. Die. <laughs> However, they're fairly easy to stab in the butt because they tend to take very heavy weapons that move very slowly. So stab them in the butt. Oh, no thanks. Yes, this is actually a woman, despite how it looks. The big, muscular person. But yeah, it's apparently a woman. There I go. <laughs> Any story in epilogue? Okay, okay, gotcha. I go, got the large ember. These guys, characters can also sometimes drop a uh, sack. Face the, the sun. <laughs> Welcome back, Plasma. <laughs> We're doing pretty good for ourselves. And how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Now, if you look up over here, I believe there's actually another one of those ladies right there. In my butt a break. Okay, yeah, take it easy. You. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There we go. We set him free. Hooray! Thank you. Been eating alive. I started to think. Thank you. Thank you dearly. So by saving his life, he'll actually train us in the ways of pyromancy. And honestly, any character you play as can pick up some pyromancy spells because pyromancy is very useful. But to basically it's broken. It's broken as all heck, honestly, in the first game. Just roll through the barrels. Yeah, you can just roll through barrels. Like, <laughs> boom. <laughs> I can just, like, kick them, too, if I want to. Eh, hey, get out of here. <laughs> now, if you made notes, this character was up there. So if we try and leave... Oh, no. Eh. Hey. Again, just kind of walking in a, in a circle around the body can usually get most enemies. Like, yeah, just, just walk in a circle around them. Or her, actually. But still. Bam. You know the timing of when they start moving again. You can actually backstab them over and over and over again until they die, which is true of every NPC as well. And there we go. We got the sack. All right. Sack. You can now wear a sack on our heads. Isn't that wonderful? Not certain why you would want to, but actually, there's a reason why you want to. It gives you a small stat boost for basically no weight, so it's, it's actually fairly nice. It's like seeing how many loincloths you have by the end. Yeah. Now, you can get that item, but there's actually a slime in the ceiling that'll drop on your head. Not a fun time. And I don't think the item's actually that worth it. I don't remember what it exactly is, but it's not really worth it anyway. So I'm not going to do it. If you walk over here and look at the ceiling... Oh, man, there's a lot of slimes here. Gross. Ew. 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 Ah! Get oh, off! You got like-liked. I got, I got one on my head. Oh! I'm running circles around you! I'm running circles around you! <laughs> What's up, short... <laughs> What's up, fat cakes? I'm running circles around you! Ain't so hard now, are you fat cakes? Yeah. 
There we go. Now, this door here requires you to get a key in the dungeon to open. But if you start with a master key, again, another use for the master key, you can um, open it for free. Make it a bonfire. Nice. I'm running circles around you. Oh, wait, while we're here, we might as well level up a little bit, right? A little bit more faith. There we go. Boom. Uh, reinforce our armor. We don't have any large shards. We have plenty of small shards, though. So, go with the helmet, I guess. Boom. Next time I eat a salad. <laughs> Next time I eat my dust. dust. I am owning you. You fat ball bastard. <laughs> I played plenty of TF2, I'll just say. Though, oh. honestly, Scout is not my character. I, I don't play him very much. Those $400,000 bullets don't do you a whole lot of good if you don't hit nothing. <laughs> Ooh. Now, you're supposed to actually go this way because most people actually encounter this the other way, like that from there. There yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm a lot better at scout than I am. Well, Listen, speak. birds fly, grass grows, breed bees sting, and brother, I hurt people. <laughs> grass grows, birds fly, and brother, I hurt people. <laughs> if you were from where I was from, you'd be fucking dead. Yes, I love. Woo! I used to play TF2 back in the day, but I, it's been a long time. It's not. I'm not really into it anymore, unfortunately. Now most people go this way. Through this little hole in the wall and go, whoops. <laughs> and get laid on this pile of junk and get attacked by a giant rat. Look at that size of that thing. It's a but giant rat that makes all the rules. But we're above him, so we can actually do a drop stab on him. Or I could miss the drop stab and die. Whoops. Oh, you still you still got him. No, I didn't get it. It would have been an animation for it. Uh, yeah. I, a little slow on the trigger there. But for us, though, he's not that threatening, actually. He's just big. There you go. Goodbye, rat. Rest in pieces. Yeah, there's the ch the chamber key. You need to un unlock that area. We already opened with the master key. Huh. Actually, pretty rarely go this way, so I'm kind of lost now. <laughs> yeah, I so very rarely go this way, although it has one of my favorite bosses. <laughs> At least one of my favorite in terms <laughs> of design. Right, go. Oh, he didn't die. Die, rat, die. Now, rats can drop humanity. They're one of the few enemies that can... But uh, it's not very common that they do. Die, rat, die. Sometimes they drop huge manatees. Yeah, so, I, I said that. Yeah. There we go. So here we are. You actually want to be. Ow! You want to be here because there's another uh, channeler over here that'll. Oh, oh, I need to drink. Okay. I'll take the hit. Drink. These rats can stagger lock you if you're not careful, so be very careful not to let that happen. Uh, they, they have a, a, their attack animation is actually much faster than basically any of yours, so we, if you're not careful, they can hit you multiple times before you can do anything, and it sucks. However, uh, we got rid of them, so we can now handle this Chandler by ourselves. No thanks. The Chandler can boost damage of any enemy, of multiple enemies, including himself. There we go, but luckily for us, he doesn't have much health. If you don't kill this Chandler right now, he will be buffing the boss as you fight him in that arena down there. Which sucks. He does like oh. twice as much damage as before. Which is terrible because he'll kill you in like one one hit or maybe even two hits. It's oof. Let's go ahead and use some magic. There we go. And we have this we have this in our inventory. Let's go ahead and use one and cure the poison. There we go. All good. Say, did you have any purple slurm? Yeah, I went out of my way to grab some, as well as the wolf ring. Oh nice. Yeah, wolf ring's great. Because, yeah, the dogs in the Capra Demon really need the wolf ring to deal with, oddly enough. I mean, they're wolves. That's why you need the wolf ring to, heal, to deal with them. Capra Demon isn't too bad. It's his dogs. Yeah, the dogs will stagger lock you, and then you'll get hit by the Capra Demon, and then you'll die, and people will get mad. <laughs> but if you have the wolf ring, you can attack through it and kill the dogs before they can kill you. And then maybe you'll, you'll avoid getting hit by the Capra Demon. It's great. Now, I believe what we want to do is actually walk, not over here, not this way, Watch we want to go the, the other like, way. Watch out for the like-like. Now that we killed the Chandler, we actually want to head down to... <laughs> you got a rat on your head. Yeah. <laughs> oh, through here, I believe. And then to your right, to where the giant rat was. And you'll fight the giant rat over here. He's not super tough, but he can poison you, and that's kind of nasty. However, the more important part is going over here, 
and sliding off the little cliff here. If you're careful and stay on this the sides over here, you'll be able to slide all the way through and not fall in that giant hole there, which is I almost fell into it anyway. Whoops. <laughs> Because we didn't fall in the hole, we can actually go over here and open this door at the top of the staircase. Which will lead back to that bonfire we just had. Nice. There we go. Up we go. Now remember, channelers will not respawn when killed outside of the certain area where they're commonplace. So we can just go ahead and, you know, kill him and not have to worry about the boss being buffed anymore. This is actually a very good spot to place your sign if you're going to be summoning, by the way. If you want to have friends help you out, this is, the, this is the spot to do it. Not enough points to level up, huh? Okay. Let's go ahead and re reinforce our gauntlets one time, and... Oh, that's it, I guess. Time to repair everything. There we go. Holy all repaired. trousers. Yeah, holy trousers indeed. <laughs> holy trousers is <to> yeti. <laughs> Great grandfather's trousers at a yeti. <laughs> mm, smashing. So we can actually go through this doorway over here in order to enter the area with the rats we were just kind of in, as well as get a giant axe. I think it is like right here with all those rats, but I don't think it's actually worth it. That was a good sweep. Yeah, the the this, the long sword has a very good sweep on it. This rat is not dying though because I keep swinging over his head. A great axe, yeah. If you're a strength type, this is actually very good for you. If you're not, well, too bad. <laughs> you have to sit. Yeah, I gotta go sit down again because I don't. I didn't need to go that way, and now I'm poisoned. I don't really want to deal with the poison. I need 20 faith. I want to be able to uh, throw bolts around. I think I need 25 for that, but whatever. Ow, ow, ow. You see, I got hit like three times there. Did did like half my health and damage. And I'm pretty well armored here. So you gotta watch out. It, it's, it's not safe. I could head back, but I have plenty of healing anyway, so we're not gonna worry that much about it. Rack in my brain, I think it is 25 for bolt. Yeah, I think it's 25. It's not it's not a low number, and you don't get many bolts on it. But it's a decent spell. I already needed like 10 extra points in order to, to cast the next one. The uh, Greater Bolt. And Greater Bolt is much, much better than the Standard Bolt. Now, we could kill these enemies, but actually, it's not. we don't need to. They'll mostly leave us alone, actually. However, we can do is talk to this guy. I'm, I'm Donald of Xena. I adore trinkets and oddities, so I trade for them. And what we can do is le learn the Joy get gesture from him. He also sells the Master Key, if we don't already have it. So, if you really, really want that, honestly. He also sells these really weird items, like, like the uh, armor set he's wearing, as well as the uh, crystals and stuff he carries around. He does also sell golden pine resin, however, it's not an infinite supply. You can only buy, like, three of them, I think. I'm just going to buy a wooden arrow from, a wood from him. There we go. Call that good. Well, I'm certain we will make a good trade. Uh, you have a question, so I am willing to... Oh. I tried to sound rude, but why don't you use your face cam in the first few streams after using it? Uh, that's because I'm currently playing on the PS4, and the PS4 is to my left. So most of the time you'll be seeing me, uh, the side of my head, instead of me, you know? <laughs> like right now, if I turn it on, you'll be seeing the side of my head instead of my face, which would be, you know, <laughs> not the most entertaining, I think. Okay, I mean, hold on a minute, let's put this up. Yeah, where is it? Where is it? Is it on? No, it's not on. There, see? Like, I'm, I'm looking like this the entire time, you know? Uh, it's black screen. No, it's there not. Yeah. So, uh, I'm doing this the entire time, so all you would see is the side of my head, you know? <laughs> Thank you. That was a fine trade. Yeah, we, we bought one arrow from him. How, what a fine trade that was. <laughs> when I play on my computer, though, it's when I face forward, and that's what I'll play have with pet. Uh, face cam on. I'll try to figure out more ways to play in front of me. I could just, eventually, hopefully, we'll have a better setup once we move to the new house. That's still a few months out, though. So, a few of these streams, like this one right here, where I'm playing on the console, is not going to be face cam. I guess I could do it. I could move the camera around, but it'd be very awkward. There's not a, that's not very many good spots to put it in. Uh, anyway, let's go fight the boss, huh? Ah, uh, I love this boss, actually. He's so, fu he's so funny. 
this guy. Look at look at him. His tiny little little floppy head. <laughs> oh, you screwed up! <laughs> and there he is, Big Chungus. His head will actually flop if you hit it. It's really funny. Oh, I love the gaping dragon. Yeah, this is actually one of the dragons that's still alive, apparently. Uh, he's kind of undead, but, you know, he's a lot... Technically alive, I guess. I don't think he died. The The whole thing is he was cursed for oh, think, having think a Joey. voracious appetite. Yeah. You know? So, so he's got to do a touchdown and then walk forward. You can hit him in the head, but... See, look, look, it flops around and you hit it. <laughs> he flop. He'll just kind of do a charge attack at you, which sucks. Yeah, this walk forward actually hurts a lot, so don't let it hit you. However, if, we're, if you hit him in the back here, where his tail is, you can actually, again, break off the tail and get a weapon. Very nice. The weapon is, of course, a strength weapon, because just about every, like, dragon weapon is, besides the first one you get. But it's still nice to have. Whoops! Ow! <laughs> Jerk! <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him really do that move. I mean, he doesn't. He'll do it. I've seen it before, but like, he pretty rarely does that. Uh, is he, he's gonna do a charge. Yeah, there we go. If you touch him in anywhere, even his tail or his legs or whatever, that it'll count as a hit. So don't let it that happen. There we go. And he got the axe. Nice. So to get jerk. Uh, he still got me. He's gonna walk forward now. There we go. Oh. What the, what the what? What? Yeah. I don't I don't remember this. Yeah, he can do that. Okay, I got out of there. Whew. That's if you, why you don't want that. You don't want to have him break. I don't remember him that ever happening before. I mostly just do like a big roar and try and drop down in front of you. I don't remember that happening before. But yeah, he will. He will grab. I've never seen that move before. That kind of threw me off. Like what the heck? Oh well, we'll get him next time. But yes, he'll do double damage if the Chandler upstairs is still alive. So you can see the talent damage that's already taking there. That'd be twice as much if he was still the other guy was there. It's very important to kill him. You can do it the hard way, but there's no reward for doing so. You know. You know the, uh, out of uh, alternate between left and right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I didn't get killed there instead of. Yeah, I mean, he does try and gulp you down, and he, I think he could have killed me there, but uh, by mashing left and right, you can break free of a, uh, well, L1, R1 in this case for the PS PS4. You can get out of grabs. However, it's, uh, you're still basically guaranteed to take some damage. It just lessens the damage. I've never seen him do that before. <laughs> huh. Well, the more you know, I guess. Honestly, when I fight this boss, I usually have a range up and I usually just throw bolts at him until he dies. Because <laughs> dragons are weak to thunder, as shown in this opening cutscene. He'll do the cutscene again. You can actually skip that by pressing the uh, button control stick in. There we go. We're going to run at him. We're going to slap him the, the jowls. Boom. Take that. The head is a weak point. You'll take extra damage if you shoot him, if you hit him there. So, you know, try and do that. His tail is back. Unfortunately, if you break off his tail again, you'll not get another axe, but it's a free hit. It's a free, like, easy to hit spot, so might as well do it, right? Good stuff. There we go. One, two, three. Oh, he's got to stick his tail at me. Ah, oh, I didn't roll early enough. A little bit too late on the roll there. Oh, well. Oh, he's turning around. Don't let him land on me. Ah, I mean, I should heal. Yeah, that was going to walk at me. Ooh, scary, <laughs> you know? Ooh, yeah, you're real scary. He might stand back up again, but he usually walks after he's throwing himself down like that. Yeah, right, you'd think it would, that would work out that way. Die! <laughs> there we go. Close casket, the ugly casket of the ugly cemetery. Strong armor, I guess. Yeah, we do have pretty tough armor. We're, we're wearing one of the best sets in the game in terms of uh, weight to uh, armor power. It's not, it's not the best armor, but... It is fairly powerful for what, for what it's, uh, how much it weighs. Also, the regular knight set, which is not nearly as good. I tried to swing his tail at me, but he doesn't have a tail. His invisible tail can still hit you, though, so be careful about that. Eh. Eh. General rule of thumb is if, if an enemy jumps, try to walk away from it. 
Ah, <laughs> sorry, buddy. Your tail ain't there in the war. Ow, he stepped on me. Yeah, see, I've, seen, I've also seen him do stop attacks, not grab attacks before. Now, that was really weird. Most of the time, he'll stomp the yard, but... Or do a tail sweep. <laughs> Ow! Mm. I didn't miss it having bolts right now. I could really use some bolts. But my stats are actually not high enough to do to uh, use them properly anyway. Oh, is that his grab? He might, be trying to, he might be trying to grab me right now. Yeah, that's his grab. Oh, okay. Right there. That, was, that was weird. Okay. So how did he hit me while standing right here? Is it actually reached that far? It's it's because his hitbox is a bit long. Okay, come on. Come on, plant your dumb head down so I can smack it. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah. See, that's, that's the grab right there. Okay, now I hit him in the head a couple times. We're going to walk over here and not get hit by him. And heal a little bit while he's doing his dance, his walk forward animation. There we go. Now we're on his back legs. We're just going to wail on it. So he has to very slowly lift his, lift his head back up before he can do anything else. There we go. See? Really good opening there. Oh, if he just starts moving around like that, kind of like gyrating, he's going to vomit. And the vomit has a huge, huge radius, so stay away from it. See, see how far that was? And he's missing towards the wall, you know? He's going to start walking pretty soon. I'm only going to risk the one hit. And there we go. He's going to walk. But remember, your armor can make a huge difference in this game. Make sure to upgrade if you can. I unfortunately don't have any more upgrade materials, but, you know, but what I do have is it's doing pretty good. He's going to jump. We're going to walk away so it doesn't land on us. There we go. And now I can try and bait him into doing the, the downward slam. And like there. Hit him in the head a couple more times. One, two, three. Maybe the fourth one. There we go. Now I can walk away. Whew, it's close. It's close. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's going to lift his head back up. So it takes a little while for him to recover from that. And we can just kind of wail on his arms. <laughs> oh, he's going to do it again. There's the vomit. Like, just watch. The, just look how far away that is. He's at the, he's at the door over there. Yeah, it's, it's, a it's a huge blast radius. His head is down. We're going to smack his head. One, two, three. Can I go for the greed? No, we're not going to do it. Not going to do it. It's not going to be good. Roll out of the way. Okay. Whew. <laughs> for greed strats. Never go for greed strats. It's a bad idea. Just take your time. <laughs> there we go. We got him. Ah. And for that, we have access to the best area in the game. The Blight Town. <laughs> Everyone, just about everyone hates Blight Town. Thank, thank you, yeah. Ah. Oh. Now, we don't really need to because we don't, we're not really... Whew. We're not really at a huge risk of... Because uh, we can just kind of walk back. But if you want to, like, head back to the base real quickly, use that homeward bone you just got. Because most of the bosses these days will drop a homeward drone, so that way you can just teleport back to base and use the points. Oh, hello, Rat. What are you What are you doing here? Get out of here. To uh, use those points you just got. You mentioned if I got killed with a rat right there. Jeez. Oh. Now, we actually skipped out on a good chunk of the of the, uh, the sewers, but basically, if you can, try to avoid those chunks. Don't fall into any holes you see, besides the one up there where the... Uh, the butcher was. Don't jump in any holes. It's a bad idea, let me just say. Because you'll encounter an enemy that called the Basilisk that can paralyze you or actually curse you and take away half your maximum hit points Tempor until you find a cur uh, purging stone. It's not a good time. Okay, if I only have 20 faith. Uh, endurance, maybe a little bit. Uh, 22, 23, 25. That's probably good enough, I guess. All right, back up we go. GG, thank you, thank you. There we go. Whew. Ah. <laughs> but yeah, this is now plus five longsword, not the one we found earlier. So just about anyone can have this, honestly. All right, all right. Uh, we're gonna make our way back to where we were before, just so we could spend the the points. 
In fact, if we go back to Firelink Shrine, we actually encounter a new NPC. The guy in the barrel we saved is actually up there. Die. <laughs> you can see it's kind of important to have to be able to see what you're doing. And if you lock onto an enemy, you can see what, what they're doing, maybe. But it's sometimes it's better to have a uh, different view of what they're doing. That's why I like to have con the manual control of the camera. So that way I can see what's ahead of me or around the corner without actually having to be around the corner, you know what I mean? Ow. Ow. Now, one thing that they don't actually tell you about this game is that hu that number in the corner there, humanity, I can spend that for things, but for every point of humanity you have, you get a resistance to fire and other kinds of effects. So by having 99 humanity, your stats in terms of defense will go really highly up. However, trying to farm that much humanity is not usually worth it. Just that, you know, it is a defensive boost by having that much lying around. Just don't try and go out of your way for it. It's just not worth grinding that way. But we're getting a one-point boost to all of our to all our defenses. Great, huh? But if you look at our stats here, my defenses are like 157 or whatever. So one point is not huge, but it can add up over time. Up to 99, so hey. <laughs> Oh. Go ahead and chug. Hello, oh, lady. We're not going to actually bother you right now. We're going to go over here and see what we can get. Oh. Sorry, I'm a little tired. I've actually been, you know, kind of kind of streaming, but not really streaming for like five hours now. You know, we're only about two and a half hours into my stream. I was live on Brutal Sue's uh, Among Us game for quite a while. You want to check that out? You, uh, go ahead and check out her VODs if you do. If you want to see me in action. I got a really sweet round once. <laughs> well, actually, I, t I tend to win as imposter because people don't suspect me. For my Because my strats are cool. And good, I think. And ouch, I'm getting stabbed in the face. <laughs> ah, here he is. Hello, my friend. Hello. Well, I see you made a hand. I have my pyromancy in the great swamp, so I can usually manage with a bit of care. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, I can send the spells with you. I think we have a knack for it, but we need it material. I'll be pleased to help you. Ah, and unless you find the magics unsavory. Yeah, wonderful. I'm sure that, you know, they'll be of some use, some assistance. Here, first take this. And I've got a pyromancy flame. We can now use it to cast fire. You're a fully fledged pyromancer. Nice. Well, let's get started. Right? Well, nice, mate. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I don't have the souls right now to uh, to upgrade it, but pyromancy is very strong. Definitely worth doing if you can afford it. Because the only investment you need in pyromancy is souls, not not levels into like certain stats. You just need souls, and it gets expensive, sure, but it's worth it. It's also a smurfing technique a lot of people used to use. Though these days, the power of your power messy hand can also does count towards the level you can be matched at. So it's it's good these days. They fixed it. Not even that. I mean, I mean both of them. Yeah, I mean it, it takes about three to four, three to four depending per character, and it might take like I think maybe eight. I think. Oh, it depends on which one you go for, I think, honestly. That? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Oh, yeah, and we're back here once more. We're actually not here to buy anything. Uh, we're not to upgrade anything. We're actually here to buy uh, more upgrade materials. Because <laughs> I'm out. I need more. And also, this uh, stop over here is kind of a, a short stop of my, my run through. We're actually going to be heading back to the bonf... No, 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 not the bonfire. The statue to finally become a sun bro and get our hands on the th thunderbolt. Ah, why, that's a fine ember you have there. Thanks. Smith some mighty weapons with one of those. Why not lend it to me? There we go. Magnificent. You won't be disappointed. 
I can hardly wait to get started. So at this point, because we gave him the large amber we got in the chest next to the butcher, we can actually upgrade our basic weapon here to plus six or seven, eight, nine through to up to ten. After which point we have to wait get another amber in order to go any further than that. But while we're here, can I I don't have any large chunks, darn. Let's see here, night gauntlets. Two ah, we need one more. We don't have enough darn. Get yourself knife. Do I have any souls? The answer is yes. Okay. Bam! There we go. I'll go ahead and buy one more. They cost 800 each, which is about one of those souls. So just... There we go. Reinforce the armor. And boom! But yeah, see... You upgrade armor up to 10 times to the point where they'll be twice as strong as, as before. Each chunk, anyway. So, it's really worth upgrading your armor if you get hit a lot. And I don't get hit that often, but still, it's not dying compared to just taking, taking damage is it's better than taking dying, you know? Taking death to the face. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. It's better to take damage than to die, right? So, yeah. Upgrade your armor, it's good. I'm still a little bit too heavy. Do I have anything lighter I could wear? Eh, that's fine. You know you're heavier when your your roll is a little bit slower. See, there's a little bit of delay before I stand up, and it makes the kind of the clink, clunk, clunk sound when you're moving around. Nope. Ah. Ah. No thanks. <laughs> All right, go go on their shield side for these guys. They almost always miss. Some enemies are better to go on their weapon side, but the shield side is better for those guys. Alright, we're back. Back in Quaction. And... Come on. No, I can't do it still. I do need 25 faith. Oh. Awesome. What did you say, 25? Yeah. Oh, boo. Boo, I say. Sorry. I thought having a uh, chunk would be good enough, but I guess not. Anyway, we're pretty far away now, so let's go ahead and use the Homeward Bone and get out of here. This Homeward Bone will take you back to any bonfire you last rested at. The one we rested at was actually down here in the sewers, so we can go from here any further. So I don't have to walk all the way back. It's very nice. The Miracle Homeward does the same thing, though it's a spell you need to equip, and, you know, usually if you need to equip a spell... Uh, You'd probably be at the bonfire anyway, and carrying around an extra spell slot just to go home whenever you want to. Uh, I don't know. Most people just prefer to have health or damage boosting for your extra spells. But if you got a spare slot, I guess you can take it. Then you have to buy the spell too, so, you know. <laughs> anyway, we killed the boss. Let's go ahead and head over here and open the door. Welcome to Blight Town, one of the worst areas in the entire game. Ah, uh, everyone hates this place. It sucks. <laughs> also, that is terribly designed. Well, it is kind of. It lags real bad. <laughs> but it's just that it's a kind of a kind of a crawl to get through. Let's just say. There we go. And a lot of ways, it's kind of. I guess the word is cheap. Mine it so much, but I do have optimization mods and still still speed running. Okay. There you go. So yeah, you gotta watch out for these guys. They'll just kinda smash you into the earth for a ton of damage. But if you just again walk in a circle around them, you'll just be able to shove them off the cliff and they'll die. Bye bye. Oof. also very slow in standing up, so you can actually usually get them in a good backstab kind of loop. But again, you kind of need to know what you're doing to get a good read on that kind of thing. Again, walk in a circle, dodge their attacks, and you'll be home free, basically. Ah, oh boy, he's not a weird spot. That guy will try and grab me or push me. It's very bad. Okay. 
I'll, I'll just admit to you guys right now, I don't normally fight these guys because I usually take the shortcut we open way earlier, the very beginning of the game, to uh, get down to where we need to go. Jerk! Get off me! Get off! There we go. Get rid of, get rid of him temporarily. Oh, get these clowns out of my way. Now, let's go ahead and go over here. Now, these big kind of meaty guys will try and shove you off a cliff. They'll literally try to shove you off the cliff. It's a pain. I don't really want to deal with all of them at once, so we're just going to back up over here and see who follows up. It's these guys, huh? Well, let's go ahead and heal up a little bit. Can he climb the ladder? Answer is yes. Okay. However, we can separate him that way by slashing him. The fat guy cannot climb the ladder, so we're pretty much safe from him. And now I can drop stab these two. They'll get a good damage boost on whatever the... Ow! He followed me, jerk! Go in and heal. But yeah, if you see a ladder, it's a great way to drop stab enemies that follow you around. He's doing a big roar. The other guy should hopefully follow me. I can take care of him before I deal with the other one. Get out of here! They're gone! There we go. He tried to think. Of, he thought I was going to walk into in front of him. I didn't. So he could just stab him in the butt and throw him off a cliff. Or he'll die right there. And what is the prize for killing this gigantic, like, threatening behemoth? It's poop! <laughs> Hooray! I'm sure Brutal Sea will be happy. <laughs> but yeah, you kick the guy's butt, all you get is poop. Hmm. This looks like a dumb idea, but maybe I should do it. Ah, uh, nah. Oh boy, but you see that guy over there? He's shooting at me, and the da when he hits you, he'll poison you. But the worst part about this is, the poison he deals is not regular poison. It's toxic poison, which counts can't be killed with regular clumps. You have to use the blooming clump in order, in order to, uh, to cure it. Which is terrible, because they're a lot rarer. Also, toxic does about twice as much damage as regular poison does, so you gotta really be careful about that. However, if you kill him, he will not respond, so try and rush him down before you die. If you get caught out, of course. Whoa! Hello, mate. How you doing, huh? Oh, hello. Yeah, I'll just keep slashing you, buddy. <laughs> I got plenty of stamina. <laughs> That's why stamina is good to have. You can just keep slashing at a guy until he dies. Until he's dead. Okay, where are we at? Where are we at? Yeah, I will tell you, my tips for this area are pretty light because, again, I don't play this area very often. I usually use the master key to skip it because that's the best advice I have for you. Start with the master key or buy it from the guy with the horns. Hey. Yeah, we're going to kill him because he's, not, he's a big jerk. There we go. Whew. Where are we at, huh? Run for it. Okay. But yeah, you have to kind of be on your guard here because those guys will come out of nowhere and try and shove you off a cliff. Which is, you know, not a fun time, let's just say. I can hear a dog somewhere, too. I don't see him. Oh, there's somebody. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Let's go ahead and climb up this ladder here. There's a ladder right here and see where it goes. Uh, Shadow Mask. That's the ninja outfit that a certain character will wear. You can actually encounter in this area if you're part of a certain covenant, which we're not part of, so oh well. Mm -hmm. Where do I need to go from here? Uh, that doesn't look like a place we can go. Drop down here. It doesn't really do. Oh, I guess we can grab this while we're here. It's a little broad night. Nice. It's doing much good otherwise, though. Hmm. 
I did kind of drop down here to grab the stuff, but it may have a bad idea. Yeah, it's it's Blight Town, full of bad ideas. It's like me. And we gotta roll around here and encounter the dogs. The dogs down here are smaller than the ones up top, but they're actually really way way worse. And that sniper over there, she, she just shot me for a, a lot of, for basically my entire health bar because toxic it sucks. As you see, I'm already basically dead. There's not much I can do about it either. These clowns will try and push me off a cliff, but I'm going to ignore them and keep going. I need to heal real bad. I might make it in time. I go to my inventory and use one of these purple moss clumps. I can actually cure the toxic and not die. However, I only have two of those because they're incredibly rare. And one of them was dropped by the sniper I killed earlier. Because they'll drop one sometimes if you kill them. They're not guaranteed to do so, however. So try to avoid getting shot by the snipers. Just, you know, difficult proposition, I know. Because they're snipers. They're, they're jerks. I believe there's actually a... I believe there was actually a uh, bonfire around here somewhere, but I don't know. Was it... Oh, hello. Ow. Jerk. There we go. We got three of those guys. Whew. But yes, the snipers will not respond once you kill them, so please kill them if you see one. So that they're going to be difficult to do so because they typically try to stay far away from you and snipe you from a distance. There we go. Drop stab on these both. There we go. And then kill them with this with sweep attack. Nice. This little platform here is actually the halfway point of the level. However, we didn't find the bonfire along the way, so I'm kind of in, in hecked. I'm kind of hecked, honestly. Oh. A whole heckin' heap of trouble. No thanks. Funnily enough, the best way to get through this area is actually completely ignore them and keep running. Just find your way through and ignore them. This ladder here. Ah, 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 through the gates. And keep running, keep running. Hmm. Someone's trying to snipe me and I don't have the uh, any way to get to him, so I'm going to have to keep going. Drop. Ah, and I got toxic. We're basically hecked now. I don't have any way fast way to heal, really. Heal, 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 heal. And... There we go. My healing abilities will not out out heal my uh, the damage we're taking from this toxic. I will not be able to survive for very long unless I can get somewhere where you can get to a bonfire. Or what I can do is just keep running downwards. If you look carefully where you're landing, you can eventually just kind of get to the bottom and hopefully make it to a bonfire. However, I can't guarantee that's the case. Uh, for this drop here, I'm probably going to die. Yeah, I'm dead. All right. And I got poison on top of that. Ouch. This is why this area is very nasty. Very nasty. Oh, okay. And the worst part is all the bot, all the enemies have respawned. Ah, oh, well, nuts. But if you don't want to do that area, I will highly recommend taking the the master key. You, you can actually encounter the guy that sells it in the later areas, because he's not actually going to be here anymore, I don't think. Now that we talked to him enough. No, he's still there. Okay, good. Hello. Uh, he doesn't have the master key because I already I already have it. So, whatever. Thank you. Didn't mind so much, but I did. Whoops, I did, was looking at chat. Oh well. Ah, uh, yep. Don't, don't look at chat while playing this game. <laughs> That's another tip I have for you if you're gonna stream it. Don't look at chat very often. It's it's uh, a death trip. Death trap. Death trip. Death chat. There you go. Death chat. Ah, uh, the AC is on. I feel much better already. Whew. Yeah, it is hot. That's why the AC is on now. Are you doing okay over there? Go for it, go for it. But yeah. Ah, 
feels so much better. Now, if you run around and like grab the stuff down here, you should be able to find a few large shards in order to upgrade your weapon. However, I did not, so oh well. <laughs> if you get down all the way down to where the where the swamp actually is, there's actually these enemies you can find there that can give you shards very, very easily. In fact, it's probably the best way to get large shards in the entire game. As well as the green shards you need to upgrade your special items. If you have an elemental weapon, they require green shards upgrade, as far as I remember anyway. Like fire, thunder, magic, you know, anything like that. And yes, holy weapons also count, it's the same thing. However, the one we caught, called the Sword of Astora, is actually a, uh, a unique item. So it requires the Twinkly Titan to upgrade instead. I have no souls right now, besides like a, f a very like moderate amount of them, so I don't really need to worry too much about losing them. So I can just kind of make a run through. Honk, uh, hello, Monster Truck, how are you doing today? Please don't be on top of the ladder. Okay, good. We're good. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Nothing over here. Okay, we're going to go this way. They're going to jump at me. We're going to walk run past them. There we go. But yeah, as you see, again, positioning is very important because you can just run past most of these enemies and they won't be able to stop you. Like, 90% of the time they won't even be able to stop you from doing whatever you want. And I believe over here is the bonfire. This time I'm going to get the bonfire so that way I don't have to worry so much about it. There we go. And, ha <laughs> Job is done. We have the bonfire so they despawn and we're back to where they started from. Very nice. Now we're going to see if we can make our way around to where the snipers are and kill them before they can kill me to death. Taking a, uh, Pepper's got Popeye's chicken and maybe just a two. Go for it. Go for it. We have two dogs here. That's weird. Do you notice the dog are breathing fire? Not a fun time. The fire dog actually can do quite a, amount of da a large amount of damage if you're not careful. Now, how are men killing them when you have the chance? Thanks. There goes that guy. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Okay, we're down here. Now if you take this ladder up here to go fight the sniper, I think, up here. Hound, or is that you? Yeah, right? <laughs> or Growlithe. I think Growlithe's also a dog. But yeah, so you climb this ladder, and I believe there's a sniper right here. There he is. Kill him. Now that he's dead, he won't be able to shoot talk to us anymore from off distance. I mean, you should be able to handle the enemies over there. And you can also go this way for a small prize. But yeah, these kind of like meat boys here are very big on the whole pushing you around kind of deal. Which means you'll probably fall to your death very fairly frequently. Because if you notice, there's kind of a lot of uh, death falls around. Anyway, while we're here, we can also kill this giant pustule thing and get a rather unique spell. It's a pyromancy, actually. Eh. Eh. Now, his health bar is actually not right here, but we're actually dealing damage to it, don't you worry. Uh -uh. There we go. Of course, if you have bow, you can just shoot it, but we're, we're here with a melee weapon, so oh well. Die! So I think this is hurting it. I'm fairly certain it is. There we go, it's dead. And here is Power Within. You trade health for damage. It's a continual drain of your health for like a 20%, I think it is, boost in damage. Very nice, actually. Go ahead and pull his own trick on him by throwing him off this cliff. Bye. <laughs> Our the big chunk is here is not going to be very nice with us. we got to keep going. Don't waste the time waiting for them. <laughs> if you see a ladder, you're basically going to be safe to walk down it. So, you know, just go, oops, boom, you're safe. If you want to be really balling, you can actually walk down here and hopefully land okay. There I go. And get this item here. I wouldn't recommend doing this because it's just a whip. But 
you know. <laughs> if you want the item, you can do it. Just be careful about how you go at this, you know. And there's the way out. Hello. Ah, there we are. Okay. Ladder is here. Okay, we talk down the ladder. We walk down this ladder because we almost died last time. And there we go. I think there's like one more sniper around here somewhere. Yeah, there he is over there. I see that. He's shooting darts at us. Try to avoid the darts, as you know, taking your entire health pool and damage just for getting hit by a dart kind of sucks. And kill him. They don't respawn, so kill them as soon as you see them. Because even if you don't survive the encounter, next time they won't be there anymore. So, you know, that's that's a really nice touch <laughs> for your next run. There we go. Yeah. Walk down this. We should be basically home free. Be gone. And now we're here in the big swamp. But yeah, moving quickly is actually kind of important for the Big Swamp. Well, getting down to the Big Swamp anyway. Now, once you get down here, you want to immediately hit right and go to this giant, like, uh, gutter, I guess, and walk right in because inside here is a bonfire. Very nice. Man. Ah. Oh. Not enough points to level up, huh? Okay. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to actually walk over here. Walk across this area. And go fight some slugs, actually. Slugs are an enemy you can find very many of in here. And they have a tendency to drop chunks every time you kill one. So if you can kill one slug, you can get like three to four chunks. Well, five chunks of the green ones and one of the regular ones. There we go. Also, because we have the armor upgrades, we can actually get our hands on, you know, better armor. While we're here without having to leave the area. If you want better weapons, though, we have to go back to the the workshop guy and then upgrade there, because he can't get past level 5 to level 6 without his help. Ow. There we go. It's not guaranteed, but this guy's have a very high chance of dropping large chunks. So if you want to, you know, level up or whatever, you can spend a good chunk of time doing that here. Well, your weapons anyway, not, not your actual levels. They don't drop, they don't, not worth a whole lot of XP, you know, 100 souls or whatever. Not a huge amount, but the upgrades are here, so just uh, worth your time to run around here and kill these guys. There I go. Not a single drop so far. <laughs> Oh, we got them both. Nice. I hope it is powerful enough to kill them in one hit. However, it's good enough in the most cases. And I got one large shot just for walking over here. There we go. Whew. Again, these guys are slow. They're slugs. So we have plenty of time to go ahead and sit down, cast the healing spell. And be all the way back up. Uh, 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 running attack will almost always kill, at least get them close to death, and stagger them too. Also, the running attack has a little bit of a run in its animation, allowing you to kind of cover a little distance you can't normally cover in the dirt. So, like, yeah, I was able to run that, that little death there, even though I can't actually do so while moving normally. And not a single one dropped at a shard. Wow, I'm getting some really bad luck today. Typically, if you do this, you'll get about three to four large shards and about five to ten of the green shards because they, they drop the green shards in packs of, of five. So it's kind of insane. And there we go. And in doing so, so long as you already have the armor boxes, you can actually get up to... Plus ten, plus uh, six armor. Straight. There we go. 
Go and cast a healing spell. And we're all good. We're going to be poisoned again, but again, the poison in the swamp here is not very dangerous. We can actually go up here to where there's a treasure chest, actually. But there's actually an even greater secret than that. There's a treasure chest here. Oh, well, actually, there's a plank shield. It's not very much, but if you hit this wall right here, ta-da, it's a tunnel. Great. And here's a treasure chest at the end of the tunnel. Nice. Or is it nice? Because if you hit it again, there's another tunnel here that leads to a secret area. And I'm not going to go down there right now because that'll be probably for tomorrow. But uh, yeah, there's a whole secret area down here you can get to. Yeah, and already before. It's called the uh, Ash Lake. There we go, we got him. Jeez, not a single one dropped anything? I got some terrible luck today. Dang. But you know, that's the that's the thing about random drops. Sometimes you just don't get anything at all. We were doing some uh, Smash Brothers not too long ago with Wolverine, and unfortunately I didn't do too well because I was kind of stuck with Super Mario. <laughs> uh, so apparently this, the, the file that we have uh, internet access on, you know, the one that we paid for internet on, does not have any of the characters unlocked, which uh, sucks, unfortunately. <laughs> I can play with a DLC character, sure, but you know. It's, uh... There we go. So I used I used three healing spells. That's about four. That's about four or five S's. But yeah, for not very much effort, you can get a lot of lot of chunks or shards there. If you're lucky, I didn't get a single one. <laughs> so it's not a very good demonstration now, is it? That's okay though. So what we're gonna do now is, if we want to leave the dungeon, if we want to leave this nasty swamp behind, what we're gonna do is go over this way, past the uh, gutter, and head up to this lift here. So just wait for the lift to kind of carry you up. Uh, like so. Ah. And once you arrive, just, you know, walk on from the platform and make it over. Ta-da! And from here, we're just going to keep ascending until we reach where we need to go. Now, unfortunately, there's a jerk over... Nearby, they'll try and snipe us from here. And he'll almost always get you, let me just say, because he's a big, stinky jerk. So what we're going to do is we're going to go kill him. No. No thanks. There we go, we got him. Unfortunately, that area over there is actually filled with the guys that snipe you. So we don't really want to go over there if we don't want to have to. You might want the thing over there. It's, it's actually a fire keeper soul, so it improves the number of SS flasks you have. But, well, not, not improve the number of them, but improve the quality of your SS flasks, which is pretty nice. But, in general, dealing with that, those many snipers are not, not a fun time. But if you kill one each time, I suppose it's not that bad, because they'll, they'll die each time you come back there until they have those done left. I just have to deal three or four fire dogs at once, which is not the most fun, but still, you can probably handle it. And anyway, if you open this key here, you can actually open up a secret, not really a secret area, but an area over in the the ruins we passed by near the beginning of the game. We kind of just pass through them in order to get our hands on... Oh, x Carter, hello! Hey! How come in? How come in? Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm just kind of explaining how to play this game and like you're letting new people learn how to do so. How did uh, Pokemon Unite go? Ah, I kind of wish I was able to pop in for your game, but, you know, I actually ran a little bit later today than I meant to, so I started streaming at 3 o'clock instead of 1. <laughs> but how, how did your stream go? Please tell me you got some, got some sweet wins there. Maybe you'll tell over there is that, well, the Undead Dragon we got our sword from in the very beginning of the game. Well, not the sword we're currently using, but the one we got at the beginning of the game. And over here, that key we got actually works in the ruins over here. However, we don't really care about the ruins. We're actually here to go back to Firelink Shrine. Really good? Oh, that's great. That's good. I'll, as long as you have a good time, that's the important part. I'm not going to be streaming the game anymore, I don't think, but it, I'll be happy to play with people because honestly, I don't really want to support Unite, but at the same time, I kind of want to play with people I like. You know, like you guys. You guys are cool. Definitely worth supporting, I say. Speaking of which, I need to be better on the trigger here and shout out my main man here, X Curter. Uh, Curter, there we go. Boom. Yeah, Pokemon Unite. Ah, oh, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, 
It's just that I don't really agree with the kind of greedy business model they have right now, you know? It's a very different stream for playing United RPG. It sure is, right? I can actually interact with the chat a lot more here, which I like. But United is fun to play on my own time, I guess. Well, I'm not really certain if I really want how much I don't know. Anyway, we're here. And I kind of forgot what I came up here for. Actually, it's to show, that, show the way to get up here from, from the swamp. It's good. And since we're already here anyway, uh, there's also something I wanted to show you guys a little bit later on. From uh, I said I'll show you guys a little bit later on, but it's another secret, actually. So, in order to really help out with the swamp area, this secret is going to help out quite a bit. What we're going to do is we're going to head up here. And then, as soon as the, the, the ramp goes up, we're going to actually walk off onto this platform here, walk around this corner here, and make this jump. Or miss the jump entirely. Okay. Ow. <laughs> well, shucks. There's some treasures here, but it's not really what I was going for. Oh, well. Now, I have a holy sword I can use to fight these skeletons, but I'm actually not going to bother because they can't really catch me because they're too slow. Ha! You're too slow! By the way, X-Curter, have you played Dark Souls? I mean, I, I know most people in the, the Wyvern crew, I think, have, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not certain if you... If, you guys need help or whatever, this is what my stream is for. I want to try and explain to people how to, like, some of the secrets of this game, how to play it, some of the more basic concepts, you know, like, what does equipment load do and whatnot, and that kind of thing. Speaking of which, I actually didn't do that. But, uh, you have played? Nice. Did a playthrough for the first time in March or so? Okay, cool. I'm kind of an old hand at this kind of thing, so. <laughs> I can help people out, that's what I'm here for, right? Uh, jump. Ah, oh, bad jump again. Ah. Okay. Speaking of equipment load, by the way, if you look at our stats here, there's HP, stamina, then equip load. Because our equip load is below half of the number of, of maximum here, is that we can... That's why we can roll in the what's called a medium roll. If it's a quarter of your maximum equip load, you can do a fast roll. The medium roll should handle most uh, encounters you need, but sometimes the fast roll is just better. There's also a ring you can find from a certain NPC, you have to kill him to get it, um, that will... Give you an improved roll if you're doing a fast roll. So you can do an even faster roll, which is very nice, but not really required. Get out of here. Death counter that made it all the way to 620? Oh, man. <laughs> well, uh... I think my death count is currently at 7 or 8? It might be like 8 or so. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I play this game a whole lot, so it's not really much of a surprise. Okay, let's try and make this jump. Come on. Oh, okay, I, I rolled it. Okay, we're good. We're good. Whew. It's much it's much safer to do a jump instead of a roll, but we made it anyway, so that's the important part. want to get this key over here, and then jump off to land on this platform, or miss it entirely, because I'm really bad at jumping, apparently. And, uh... <laughs> get over here. If I try this again, I think it'd be about 100 and less. Yeah, yeah. And if you want some help on that game, on that game, I mean, if you have a PS4 anyway, I could, I'll be glad to help out. Jump and there we. Oh, oh okay. Never mind. Ow. Ah. Bah, humbug, I say. Humbug. Got on Switch PC. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I, I only have it on a PS4, unfortunately. Well, I do also have the original uh, PS3, but I don't think you have that one either, so. What's really neat, actually, about the PS3, though, is that if you... PS3 still has free online, I believe, anyway. I don't believe they took down online yet. So, if you want to play this game online, you can do it for free on PS3. However, <laughs> most people don't play it on PS3 anymore, so you won't run into many players. Ah, uh, there we go. Boom. Come on. Let's, let's do this right. Yeah. yeah, there we go. This is kind of a really obscure secret that I'm, I'm surprised anyone ever found. But, just kind of come over here. Uh, first, I'm going to heal a little bit. There we go. There we go. And then we curl up into a ball. Then we curl up into a ball. Pretend we're a hush puppy for about five seconds. Like, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There we go. Okay, so about 20 seconds the other way around there for. So, because, you know, I didn't start counting until a little bit late. So, about 20 seconds, and then this will happen. Whoosh! <laughs> That's me! <laughs> Okay, and with that, the egg is laid down here, while well, us, we get kind of just dropped off of here, back at the beginning of the game. Now, you may notice that those enemies were not there before, and they're actually kind of a major problem. So that's why we got to pick up the Dragon Crest Shield. The Crest Shield will actually block fire damage 100% of the time. 100% of fire damage will be blocked by the Crest Shield. It's very nice. Because these guys will kill you in a few attacks, so watch out. That in particular will kill you. Really badly. Whew. Do this. Ah, you got me, see? That one did about a quarter of my health there. <laughs> Maybe about a fifth, actually. But that kind of, like, swinging attack they, where they rush you can hit you up to the three or four times. Putting you at very major risk of getting killed by one enemy, and there's four of them in the same spot. So, we've got to be careful. At this point, however, we don't need the shield anymore, so we're going to drop it. There we go. This is the area, the only place you never want to when you're playing right through? Okay. <laughs> it actually opens up, a, this this secret here actually opens up another area. So you probably didn't go to that area either. Or the one in Ash Lake. Oh, he didn't die. Okay, there we go, boom. I thought he would die from that. Now, you gotta be careful because the floor here will actually break if you step in the, the middle here. There's a certain part of the middle that will break and you have to fight a boss. And we don't really want to fight him right now because our damage is not high enough. However, if we go over here... And up the stairs, because I opened that door earlier in the very beginning of the game. We can actually go up these stairs and get killed by this ball. Whoops. But how are we know it's there now, so we can avoid it. There we go. Nice. Kill you. Oh, we're just going to get stabbed, I guess. Boom. Then I can walk across this upper platform here. Like in the beginning of the game, you know, you, you kind of like... You walk over here, you drop down, you drop stab the giant demon. And, oh, hello, ow. There we go. That smells really good, actually. What is that? It's, uh, box stroganoff with rockfish. Nice. Ooh, rockfish. Uh, there's salmon for you. I'm happy to make you a salmon I'm alfredo. Kind of, I'm kind of hungry, but I, I did say I was going to eat, eat something after, before stream. And I did, so I don't think I should eat anything else. You're going to stick to it? Yeah. I'll make you fish pasta in the morning. Okay, thank you. Okay. There we go. Now, because we got that key on top of the church earlier, earlier, we can now open this door. I need to get more milk for to do it anyway. Yeah. And behind this door is a very special item. I go, did a long time. Don't worry about X-Curve. Thank, thank you for the popping in with the raid. Thank you so much for the raid. Heck. Now, what we got here was actually an item called the Rusted Iron Ring. What it does is that it makes you immune to the effects of the swamp. Well, not the poison part. But the slowdown effect. We can now walk on water, essentially, like Jesus. <laughs> ah. Our water, like in certain other areas, will still kill you instantaneously, but in the swamp, at least, you will be able to walk through without getting slowed down. And you can actually encounter the, the knight who saved you in the early game right here. Ah, there you see. But he's turned. He's now a bad guy. You gotta watch out for him. You look very much the same nowadays, don't we? Because he's actually wearing the elite. That's it. The one. That's one very good. Uh, I need to actually unequip this. There we go. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Take your time. Oh. Uh, come on. What you got? What you want? Come on. I'm waiting for you, buddy. Yeah. There we go. I mean, it's my own sword, so I, I kind of know the move set for it. You know. <laughs> ah, he kicked me, jerk. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, no. <laughs> he's actually one of the easiest enemies in this entire area, oddly enough. Because he's very slow on the whole, like, so oh, hey. Dude, I never used that move, actually, thinking about it. He will almost always sweep you if you're close. Yeah. Well, he, he, did, the, he did the roll atta attack. Oh, there we go. Unfortunately, because he's standing on stairs, I cannot stagger. I cannot hit him with that. 
There Rest we go. in peace, my friend. He's my favorite. And now he's dead. Oh, no, he's not dead. Now shame, he's dead. Shame he has to go like this. Yeah. And because we killed him, we, we can now steal his shield. Hooray! The crest shield here is actually a very good against magic attacks. It's like the, the dragon crest shield is very good against uh, fire attacks. However, you know, it, it's nothing that you really want to go out of your way to get. The ring is still over here in the first place. And now if you go over here, you can actually encounter and, and go back to the cell you started in. There's actually an item there that lets you uh, encounter an entire secret area. However, we'll be coming back here tomorrow probably to get, get that. As well as deal with this knight here. So, we're gonna bone home. There we go. Yeah. Woo! Well. Yeah. Okay. Now we have the ring equipment, right? We just got the uh, the uh, rusted iron ring. So watch this. We can now just walk in the swamp if we want to. It doesn't slow us down anymore. Because that following this area became ten times easier than it was before. Get out of here, ch chumps! Get out of here! Can't stop me. There's also, there's also a very powerful NPC you can encounter here if you're a pyromancer, uh, which we're not. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so we have 25 endurance, 21. We need to get down to 25 faith before we cast these faith spells. Hello. Yes. Um, this is playing on PS4, PS5. Is it? If so, is it solo only? I am indeed playing on PS4. Uh, it is not solo only, but I'm actually about to wrap up pretty soon, so, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, if you wanted to play, I mean, you can come back tomorrow and we'll see, about, we'll see what we can do. I'm just going to be doing a little bit of farming and then probably just calling it to the night, you know? Sorry. <laughs> I haven't live. I have been working for about six hours now, seven hours. Six or seven hours. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting pretty tired. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to play tomorrow, just let, just let me know. It's currently in offline mode, so I'd have to restart the game. But yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to play tomorrow if there's anyone else else to do. There we go. Boom. It's kind of doing a tutorial thing. Yeah, it's so. kind of doing a tutorial thing, talking to people about how to play this game. You know, just a very simple, like, walkthrough kind of deal. Also, oh no, I am poisoned. Ah. <laughs> the poison in the swamp is very slow. And the cool part about it is as long as you're poisoned with this poison, you can't get poisoned by any other poison. Poison. You can get toxic. But you can get toxic, but it's not the same as poison. Yeah. Because there's more potent poison around, then you won't get hurt by that one. Poison is poison, the poison that, that poisoned you. You know what I mean? Bam, bam. Oh, good. I'm just glad I've had someone else to play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to play, just let me know. In fact, I think some friends of mine want, should, well, should, well, I want to play too, though I think they're currently inactive. We'll see. I think Wolverine is getting, I think, I have it on PS4 as well. Oh, Wolverine is on PS4. I'm not sure if he's continuing to play for it or yet. Oh, yeah. Man. Worth a shot, though. Yeah. And if you want help with the game too, I'm, I'm happy to help out. I used to do a lot of play a lot of this game, actually, as a teen, I guess. I'm not sure what you would call that, even. What was it? We were in, uh, still in high school back when these things came out? It's been kind of a while. Whoa, hey, thank you for the follow, by the way. Uh, high school. Right, you uh, thank, you, thank you for the follow. Uh, running attack. Uh, not quite. Raiji Nikeda. Raiji Nikeda. I, I thought I got it right. Raiji Nikeda. Dang, these slugs are not dropping anything. Bad luck today. Oh, well. One, two, three, and... <laughs> Be aware you're also streaming late today, so... Yeah, I, I, I will... Oh, I forgot to say, yeah, sorry. Call you Rye? Okay, sure. Uh, sure, Rye. Um, I will say that I normally stream at uh, 1 p.m. PST, so this is a little bit later than I normally be live. Hopefully you'll still be okay with that. Wait a minute, one of them did drop something. Okay, there we go. You can see the little fire here. It means it drops something, which is a large time on shard. Nice. I'm probably going to be doing mostly just playing through this area and hopefully pushing towards the Sense Fortress. 
That's a first. Okay, that's uh, Miss Anthrop over here. Mm -hmm. she's, she's my moderator. Hello. As well as my artist and a whole bunch of other things, too. There we go. Uh, uh. No, no thanks. Okay, we're gonna heal up. And big sweep. It's his game, but uh, yeah. I hang out and I eat lunch with him and things. She also streams too, though. But not Dark Souls, I don't think. You think you were thinking about doing some Dark Souls, right? I have plans on returning to Challenge Runs eventually, but it wouldn't be as it, hardcore it, it, as six it, years ago. It'd be PC up too. It would be PC. I think it's all those slugs. I got one shard out of these guys. Oh well. I think that's good enough for now, though. Let's go ahead and save the game. Well, sit at the bonfire, I guess. Not really need to save the game. The game auto saves, but you know, you know what I mean. And then we'll see if we can raid somebody. Who we can raid up? Uh, let's see. It's Lewis. Is raided me of all people somehow? Uh, there's Wilverin, I guess. It make I guess it makes sense. I can raid him. So. Uh, Warframe. Any, we got Hopkins. Is anyone else around? There's, there's Tritty. I guess playing Pokemon Unite. We're kind of fun to play with Tritty. Uh, there's Nick Rising. Maybe I could rate him. That'd be kind Nick of fun. Nick Rising would be cool. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. I'd only play Rainbow Siege, but you know, maybe. Hmm. Uh, if anyone on chat wants me to rate somebody, let me know too. I'll see if, see if we can find somebody. Uh, 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 you could uh, check uh, the collective too. See who's live. Uh, collective, huh? There's Ultra Kitten Boss. Ultra Kitten Boss would be good. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's playing Minecraft though. Okay, well, may I, may I just raid them? Bit of a different pace. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they're in the same team. The let's see how it's called. It, what's it called again? The collective of TNC. I think it's called the Nightbreed Collective. Yep. There we go. So it's part of the Nightbreed Collective. We're gonna go hit up uh, Ultra Kitten Boss. I think. Let's go ahead and no, not 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 exclamation point slash raid Ultra Kitten Boss. Thank you all for popping in today. We'll be doing more of our playthrough tomorrow and see how it goes. Ah, uh, boss. There we go. Ultra Kitten Boss. So again, I'll be starting at 1 p.m. PST, not at uh, 3 p.m. PST. So hopefully you guys can make it still there. <laughs> and we'll probably go from three to four hours. Other than that, hey, have a great night. Thank you so much for popping in today. I had a, I had a great day. A lot of fun, too. Bye, Pac-Man. <laughs> Bye, Pac-Man. <laughs> have a great night, okay? <laughs> the dude's everywhere. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty certain he's Twitch God because he is everywhere. <laughs> Pac-Man is... is out there supporting us real hard, and I really, really appreciate it. See you guys next time, though. Bye-bye.